Hoops to Friday Night Football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for some high school football. Uh, high school football Friday night, Union Pines versus Grays Creek. I'm Blake Rogers. This is my partner Don Clayton. We're here for the game tonight. A little pre-game, post-game show for you. Excuse me, pre-game show. That is. Um, anyways, we'll get back to that. So Union Pines, one and zero, coming off a uh, steamroll of Montgomery County last week, 28 to seven. Okay, and then we got uh, Grays Creek, the Bears. They had a tough battle with Hope County. They ended up winning 35 to 34. Don, what are you looking for tonight from Union Pines? This is a non-conference game for Union Pines. Union Pines is looking to take over the Sand Hills Athletic Conference. We call it the SAC. So they're looking to compete with Lee County to take over the, uh, the conference. Lee County won it last year. So Union Pines really needs to come away this game tonight with a W. There's just no question about it. Even though it's a non-conference game, they need to get their confidence up and come out here with a W tonight. Exactly. I agree with you 100%, Don. And then it's the Zaxby's pregame show. My apologies. Still getting myself together here a little bit. Looking forward to some exciting football on a Friday night. Like I said, Union Pines, a promising start last week, but we'll see if they can follow it up with another win against Grays Creek. Going to be a tough one. Had a quick chat with Coach Jason Truesdale before the game. He said they're going to try to work off what they build off of what they had last week going for them, which, Don, I know you weren't there for the game, so let me key you in. Special teams won them the game. Uh, last week, Montgomery County really struggled. They had 11 penalties and two turnovers, one on a kickoff. Uh, Don, you know high school football, you might like this here. So they had the little pooch kick where they tried like a 45-yard onside kick. Okay. Montgomery County, two times in a row, had trouble with that. And the second time, Union Pines was able to get it, and they steamrolled with their offense. Ben Finkelstein was our player of the game. He had a really fantastic night. So I'm looking for him to show out a little bit. And the uh, coach Finkelstein. you got to love Finkelstein. Yeah, Finkelstein. Maybe he'll show off a little bit of that speed tonight. The coaching staff from Union Pines is as follows. we got receiving coach Caleb Barlow, defensive back coach Jamie Killerbees Brooks. These guys like their nicknames. You'll see that throughout the broadcast of the season. Safety's coach Tony Wilson, offensive coordinator Ryan Giggy, and safety and conditioning coach is Cleet Shaper, and his son is uh, number 32, and that is Russ the Bus. That's his name for the season there. He's looking forward to make some impacts there. So game time is going to be here shortly. We've got the marching band on the field. It's a hot Friday night. Ready for some high school football, Don? Yeah, it's hot and humid on Friday night, late August. Uh, I'm not even sure school has even started yet. So it's still hot. It's still humid out on the field right now. We want to uh, give a special shout-out to Bob's Pizza uh, as well as R2 uh, Bees. Uh, and uh, they're the ones that provided our, the food in the box tonight from Dickie's Barbecue and Bob's Pizza. Absolutely wonderful stuff. So thanks to them and a big shout-out. Out. So, yeah, we're ready. As you said, Blake, we got both bands here tonight, one from UP, the other from Grays Creek. So let's play some football. And to add on to that, it is military appreciation tonight. So we had the guys on the field. So thank you to all the veterans and military personnel out there. We're going to take a short break, and we're back for kickoff. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. 
From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed, where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock, and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Legacy Toyota. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Gentlemen, to Moore County for some Union Pines High School here on a beautiful Friday night. Hot, muggy, perfect time for some gridiron football. I'm Blake Rogers. Once again, this is my partner, Don Clayton. We got the captains on the field doing the coin toss. The white cap, my man there, is getting the coin toss up, and we're going to decide who's going to kick off, who's going to receive. Just a matter of time now. 125 on the clock for the scores for the kickoff. And I tell you, Don, I could not be more excited to be here in the booth. Normally, we meet under different circumstances on the hard top. But now on the gridiron, what do you got to say about that? Yeah, that's a fact, but that's okay, though. It's, it's all good. It's sports. It's August. It's the beginning of the school year. Everybody's excited. You know, you got uh, the football, which is just super, super fun for all the, the community to come together. And you can see that here at Union Pines. You, you, the, the stands are packed out. This is a non-conference game here, and yet the stands are packed out. They come out for military appreciation. They come out to see the football team, and they come out to see this band because this band is amazing. What a great band they've got. Awesome. I tell you what, I love the big op, uh, ups for you there for the young kids. And I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. This is my first time in the booth doing play-by-play -play for football. i got many years of experience with basketball in Central Carolina. And, Don, we go way back and known you for years. And 
Uh, you watch your son grow up to the basketball program in Sanford. So it's nice to have you in the booth for my first time doing play-by-play -play and your first time doing color. So we're going to make a good team. Well, we will make an excellent team. So that's very exciting. So it looks like they're getting ready to bring out uh, Union Pines here, and they're going to be coming out to the field. I didn't, didn't quite get to see who's going to be receiving, but we'll figure that out here soon enough. So Grays Creek is coming out onto the field at this time, and it looks like the Vikings are just about ready to enter the field. We've got the cowbells here, and I hear look, you know, some cowbells in the distance. Got the fans pumped up. And I tell you, Grays Creek, they travel well, too. Their away stands there are packed up pretty good. And here the crowd goes wild as Eugene Pines leads a charge with the American flag. And they're out there on the four, uh, four field in force, ready to go, trying to improve the 2-0 in the season. It's going to be very important tonight, Don, to have a lot of energy, to bring the thunder, to have the momentum on your side. Penalties, turnovers, and moving the football is going to be my three keys of the night for them. I tell you what, there's a good three keys right there, Blake, but I will tell you this. One thing that will absolutely ruin a season is a loss early, especially a non-conference loss, because it really doesn't affect much in the conference as it relates to the standings, but what it does do is it hurts your confidence. It hurts the young men and their confidence and the ability to go out there and play football and get a big W at the end of August. And I tell you, speaking with Nathan Cochran uh, last week after the game, he was talking about how the Vikings had to have these games because when you come up against these conference teams, and it's going to be really tough, like Scotland, like Richmond County, like Lee County, just juggernauts in football. So I tell you what, the guys, the marching band is on the field. The guys are pumped up. They're ready to go. Welcome again. we we'll recap real fast. we got Union Pines against Grays Creek. That's going to be the Bears against the Vikings here. First home game of the season for Union Pines. They rolled Montgomery County last week, 28-7, and Grays Creek squeaked by Hoop County, 35-34. Very hard-fought game there, according to John Sherman. Spoke with him a bit before the game, and he just mentioned that they're going to try to run the football a lot can, uh, and really work on their passing game. He said last week they had about 25 uh, passing plays. He said he'd like to be more in the area of 30-32 to 32 with a dominant run offense. But as you know, Don, if you can't run the football, it's very, very difficult to throw it. So he looked for them to establish that early. Oh, my goodness, absolutely, 100%. And you know what you need to do, especially with these young kids in high school, if you find a play that works, keep doing it until they figure out a way to stop it. That's yeah. number one. I will tell you, this is the uh, brand-new Sand Hills Athletic Conference, the SAC is what we call it. And uh, like I say, Grays Creek is, uh, is it not in this conference. But, uh, but you've got uh, Scotland, Union Pines, Lee County, Southern Lee, Pinecrest, and Hope County. Those are the six teams in the Sand Hills Athletic Conference, and it consists, Blake, of both 3A and 4A schools. This is the first time you've had it divided between 3 and 4A. So here's what I'm trying to say. Union Pines last year came very close. They finished second in the sack. They came very close to winning that the conference. They lost it out to Lee County. Lee County went pretty deep into the playoffs. Lee County is not rebuilding, Blake. They are not rebuilding. They're just replacing some very good talent. They did lose their quarterback to graduation, but they are replacing those players. So this year, I fully expect Union Pines and Lee County to battle it out for number one in the sack this year. I'll tell you what, a bold prediction there from you, Don, and I know that Jason Truesdale is hoping for the same. He's ready to get his team rock and roll. We are moments from kickoff. Union Pines lines up for the kickoff. We got Grays Creek in the backfield ready to receive. Looks like they got two deep here instead of a gunner, so they're not quite sure what to expect from the kickoff. The band is finishing up, and we're just awaiting now. Look to see if Union Pines can get a big play here in the opening kickoff and keep Grays Creek from a big return, because I will tell you, Don, last week they gave up a few big returns, but luckily were called back for penalties. And here's the – oh, oh they try a little kick. A squib kick there to try to prevent the big runoff, and they're going to make a quick tackle there. A big play there from number 23, and that was Austin Morin. And, Don, you were talking about him before the game. He's a transfer Absolutely. from Southern Lee. He is from Sanford, North Carolina, and he's uh, moved up down here to uh, Moore County. But, man, he is a big young man. He is a junior here at Union Pines. He is a linebacker and a running back. He stands six foot two and 185 pounds, Austin Mooring. All right, I appreciate that insight there, Don. That's a very uh, talented young man. Let's see if he can have an impact on the game tonight. So Grays Creek is in the huddle, and they're working on a play. We've got Tyler Davis is the quarterback. He's starting 5'10", junior, 160 pounds. Got split backs in the backfield. Two receivers left, the snap. The ball is up the middle, and a nice little run, a positive play, a gang tackle by Union Pines. Not sure who's in there. Several Union Pines players made the tackle, but what I can see there, we had a number 11, Harley Moyer, in the mix as well as number 57, and that would be Zachary McCormick. Yeah, it looks like he picked up about six yards on that play, so it'll be second down and four, Blake, for the Bears. Second down and four here. Once again in the huddle, Grace Creek not running an offense so far. So as we mentioned, John Sherman talked about how he wanted to keep the tempo up and play their style of game and make Union Pines' defense come to them. So we'll see what they can do here. Once again, quarterback in the backfield. 
The handoff, it's up the middle. Oh, a nice play. He's got a lot of space. Tackle in the open field. He's still up. He's still going. He's down. And that is on the tackle, number 19. On the run, it was Javon Webb, number eight. He is a junior running back for Grays Creek. Five foot seven, 150 pounds. Not a big guy. Not a big guy, to say the least. But he sure did pick up a first down there for the Bears. And not only a first down, Don, but that is a Shed Depot first down. So they will move the chains, and it is to chains, excuse me. It is first and ten. Once again, Grays Creek. We'll huddle under 11 minutes to go in the first quarter just on the first drive here. Grace Creek with some early success. Once again, they line up in the backfield. A fake handoff. The quarterback takes off. That's Tyler Davis going up to the left. He's getting a lot of yards. He's still fighting, and he's going to be running out of bounds at the sidelines at around the 44-yard line. Couldn't see who got in on the play, but several Union Pines players there to make the tackle and push him out of bounds. But nonetheless, about a six- or seven-yard gain there again, Don. Three pos uh, positive run plays for the Bears. Yeah, and he was probably touched four or five times there. It should not happen. Union Pines was going to get to Davis, but he rolled out to the left on a little bootleg, and he gave a dart right to the end of the end zone. And that is six-nothing, just like that in the blink of an eye. Less than a four-minute drive there, Don. Yeah, I mean, Gray's – I mean, uh, again, Union Pines, uh, you know, they didn't help their cause, but it looks like they're going for two here. May not have a lot of confidence in the kicker. Oh, wait. I actually, take that back. Yep. No, no, they're going to kick it. And they got a funky formation. We've got six guys lined up to the left. Nobody. Oh, boy. They're trying a little trickery here, but now they're going back to a regular special teams formation. Whew. Gave me a little bit of a scare there, Don. And the kick is up, and it is good. That is Griffin McIntosh for Grays Creek. He is number 80. He is a kicker and punter, Griffin McIntosh. So with that kick, and with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go, Blake, it is seven to nothing, Gray's Creek. Well, that was quick, Don. And uh, now we're going to see if uh, Jason Truesdale and his offensive staff has got something to fire back. I know they wanted to come out and make a stop there. But I'll tell you, the keys for there, Tyler Davis, an excellent drive there and a great pass set up by the penalties by Union Pines. And then Javon Webb really bringing the hammer, running the football, finding some space and making guys miss. Yeah, you know, Grays Creek uh, also played another uh, Sand Hills Athletic Conference uh, uh, team last week in Hope County, and they were actually in Rayford at Hope County, and they, they, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they snuck out of there with a one-point victory. It looks like to me Grays Creek does not want to go through another tight game like that again. They want to come out, establish themselves, put their footprint on this Union Pines field, and take advantage of those penalties, and they did. They came up with a big touchdown. And like we mentioned in the game, the broadcast here early on, Don, Jonathan Sherman said they were up 10 against Hope County, and Hope County made a comeback. So the one thing you don't want to do is get yourself behind three, four scores. So it's important here for Union Pines, even if they don't get points on the board, but to get the ball, get a couple of first downs, and establish some field position. Because as we know in high school football, if you're getting three and outs on the 20-yard line, unless you've got a uh, potential uh, D1 punter back there, it's going to be some uh, difficulties and some growing pains because I've seen some of these guys boot them straight up into the air because I don't know if you know this, Don, it's really hard to punt a football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you know, so right now Union Pines is thinking, all right, settle down, relax, calm down. The, the stands are absolutely packed out. There's not a seat available here on the home side. The guest side is also pretty much uh, full as well. Here's the deal. You have to settle down. At Union Pines, you got to talk to your kids and say, look, guys, settle down, and let's get out here on this offense. No urgency. Let's play our game. And here's the kick, Bob. And that's actually Blake Mincer, number 17, who kicks it, and it's going to go Ow, ow. Oh, oh, a big mistake it? there. There's a penalty. It went out of bounds. I thought that Union Pines had touched it before it did. That was a scary situation. Yeah. So it looks like Grays Creek has got Griffin McIntosh with the PATs and Blake Mincer on the kickoffs, Don. That's interesting. Two different kickers. So we got kickers and punters, and they must be sharing duties. And they are sharing duties. Let's see what we got here. So this guy's going to be a spot foul. Uh, no, no, false start. Yeah, so false start. Well, that's oh, actually no. a delay of game there, Don, because he kicked the ball out of bounds on the kickoff. So that's the delay so, of delay so of he, game. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, t he didn't touch it. Okay. He did not. So it looks like, because that's what I thought too. I thought the Union Pines player had touched the ball before it went out of bounds. But then I saw the flag come in. Yeah. You know the one thing I like though here at Union Pines, and and you know, I'm sure they they have it other at other schools as well, is I love the LED down marker. Yeah. That's very nice. I you like know. it. Very easy to see. Very uh very sophisticated as yep. they would say. Yep. So, so here. So go ahead, Doug. I was just going to say, ball's on the 35 of, uh, of uh, Union Pines, and let's see what they do. All right, so we got Union Pines lining up, and we got a tight formation here. A lot of guys, a lot of bodies on the line. Oh, uh -oh. The snap goes over his head, the ball. He's, oh, Finkelstein is running and trying to get away, and he has no space, and he is hammered at the 26, 27 yard line. That's going to be a loss of eight. So, so far, not so good. For Union Pines, Finkelstein tried to make something out of nothing. And just to get that ball back and not turn it over, very important. So now 
We're looking at about a second and 17, Don. So we're going to have to have a big play here from Union Pines. Let's see what they got in the old uh, spreadsheet. Yeah, you know, again, that's not what you want to see. I mean, you know, obviously Grays Creek come out here very focused and prepared, marched their first drive down the field in about four minutes and scored a touchdown. And right here, Union Pines has muffled the, uh, the snap and it's now second down and long. I tell you what, we got split receivers here, three backs in the backfield, a, a yeah, flag on the like play. It's a false start. A false start potentially on Union Pines, unless there's a neutral zone infraction I didn't see. False start. And I tell you, Union Pines is having all wow. kinds of difficulty right now, and they have got to get it together and get it going here. Wow. So that'll back them up even further, and now we're looking at about a second and 22, if I'm not mistaken, Don. So we're going to need a big chunk play here to at least try to get this thing to the sticks to not give Grays Creek the football back inside of the uh, beyond midfield. Well, you don't have to get it all in one shot, right? No. So, I mean, you've got uh, two downs to, uh, to get that first down, but it is a long, it's a good country mile. See what Union Pines can do here. Finkelstein takes the snap. He pitches. He's got no space to go. The back is swallowed up in the no backfield. No blocking at all. Blown's assignments. And that is number 14, Ethan Biggs, the flash. But unfortunately, not enough flash there to get by that strong, stiff Grays Creek defense. So now we've got a third and a country mile, Don. I'm not sure I really like the play call. You know, I mean, obviously I'm not a coach, but I mean, you're, you're second down and 22, and it's a pitch back. So you're already starting another two or three yards deep. Uh, then, you know, so if you're going to run it, just just slap it up the middle, just go up the gut. Old-fashioned halfback uh, dive. Yeah, or pass the daggum thing. I mean, you got to send your quarterback. All right, so now we got Union Pines lining up. Looks like we might have a pass play potentially here. Oh, boy, we got had five receivers at first, but now we got four receivers and one back. And now they're going to send Cooper on the other side to block, and we've got another Probably whistle. Probably timeout. Nope. Delay, Delay of game. game offense, Union Pines. And I'll tell you right now, you know that old country uh, western movie, Don, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, right now that's Union Pines, but take out the good because right, it is not uh, steady going so far for them. So let's see if they can put it together and get something going here on this third and forever. Yeah, you just, you just need to run the ball right here, in my opinion. Uh, just run it. Uh, you know, just go ahead and concede this, uh, this series. and uh, Maybe let your defense get back out there and yeah, reset and try yeah, to get a stop. I think so. This is uh, not so, a time to, to pass it and, and maybe have a pick six. So let's see what Coach Truesdale's thinking. Finkelstein's ready for the snap and the shotgun. He's going to take it. Oh, he's looking to go. And he's got a wide-open receiver who catches it, and he cuts up midfield. He's got a potential to make a play here, but he's swallowed down well short of the sticks, but some positive yardage there. And, Don, I can't quite make out who that is on the field there, but that's a great play by Union Pines to get themselves in good position. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to locate the number myself, but yeah, no, no, that's a very good play, no doubt. But as Union Pines uh, sends out their punting team, again, uh, you know, a good positive play. But you, you've got a senior quarterback in Finkelstein. Uh, why? Why? I, I'm not sure what happened in that series. He sh he should be better prepared in the opening series of this ball game, uh, down seven to nothing. But hey, they punt and defense comes back on the uh, field, and we see what happens. All right. Well, at least they got a little bit there, and it looks like we've got a flag on the field. Referee was making some kind of motion. I'm not sure what we missed there. Has Grays Creek committed a penalty? They have not. No penalties for them. So far, we've got four for Union Pines and zero for Grays Creek. So for Grays Creek, they got a man deep, ready to return the punt. I believe that is seven. number seven, Tyler Davis, the quarterback, who plays free safety as well. So he's pulling uh, triple duty here tonight. False start on Union Pines. That's their fifth penalty. Make that five on Union Pines. So, man, I tell you, Tyler Davis is uh, – He's ready to show out tonight and show these guys what he's got. He's quarterback, free safety, and kick return. A little bit of prime time in the building here, Don. You've got the entire community of Vass, Carthage, and Cameron here in this stadium tonight, and Union Pines is just nuts. Oh, and a club, almost a block and not a great punt, but at least he got it away. Oh, and a heads-up play by Grays Creek there. Yep. Tackled by Christopher Gilbert, uh, the six-foot-two senior of Union Pines. Wow. But a very impressive catch. You know, most people would have called for a fair catch in that situation because he had uh, Union Pines. He had Vikings all over him. And very risky there. I'm not sure if his coach would approve or disapprove, but the young man brought it in. And I tell you, this is not a good start here no. for Grace Creek. It is on the 34-yard line. You, yeah. No, it's not a good start for Union Pines. Excuse Grace me. Creek has it uh, at the uh, Union Pines 34-yard line, so it's a very good start for Grace Creek. Yes. So we talked about field position, and so far uh, Grace Creek has come out First possession took a, a long way down the field, about a 65-yard drive, and now they've only got to punch it about 34 for another touchdown. Let's see if Union Pines can make a play. The snap, the handoff again. Oh, man, I tell you, this running back for Grays Creek, 
That is Javon Webb. He is a beast, and he is just running through bodies right now, and he just took on three or four Union Pines players. Gilbert with another tackle. I'm not sure when you – my son played football since he was five years old. The, one of the first things they teach you is watch the ball when you're a lineman or a receiver. Watch the ball so you don't false start. And number two is you tackle low. And my mistake there, Don, that's actually Elijah Wilson, who is a tight end and defensive end senior, 6'2", 205, who is subbing in and doing a little bit of running. And now in the backfield, it's Tyler Parks and Tyler Davis. Excuse me, Javon Webb again, and Webb gets in and cuts up midfield, that's and he's up. got a lot of space, and he's still going, and he's finally dragged down at about the 10-yard line. Looks like by number four, Caleb Milton. But do you, do you see how they're tackling up high on the shoulder pads? I mean, that's not, that's not uh, textbook tackling. You go mid-waist, you go around their waist, you get them around their legs, and you bring them down that way. Listen, I don't care. You could be six foot five, 240 pounds, and try to tackle somebody on their shoulder pads, and it won't work. You could be five foot three and 130 pounds and go at their waist, and you can bring them down. Absolutely, Don. So now we got, once again, we got receivers to the left, two of them, and Tyler Davis takes the handoff and the shotgun, and he goes straight for the end zone, and he's hit hard, and he's still fighting, and then a violent tackle there. Three or four Union Pines players on the play, but still a gain of six. So it'll be second and goal here, and I tell you, Grace Creek is driving, driving, and driving. Yes, and then uh, for Union Pines, uh, Brett Clemens, he is also a senior, and he is a middle linebacker for Union Pines. He came in and made that tackle by himself. He went two to waste. He brought him down. Numbers, uh, that is number five. Brett Clemens, the senior from Union Pines. Great play there by Clemens. So now Grays Creek is knocking on the door of 14 be against Union Pines because if it were against Grays Creek, they may have let the play continue and then give the coaching staff of Union Pines the des decision to accept it or decline it. But Maybe we had some miscommunication on the play, the officials, because I never saw a penalty flag. And I see the referee talking to one of the Union Pines players. He must be explaining what happened. So obviously it was just a miscommunication with the officials. All squared away now, marching band, letting the horns fly. Union Pines trying to get a big drive here. Let's see what they can do. Mincer raises that left arm. He strides toward the pigskin, and he sends it in the air. Oh, no, actually, he's going to squib kick it right to the ground. Union Pines has got to get there and smother it. Very dangerous play, but that is recovered by number seven, Christopher Gilbert. And it seems that Grays Creek and John Sherman are not going to kick the ball to the flash because they don't <laughs> want to see if he actually lives up to the name, Don. Maybe. That may be the case. So every time they've kicked off uh, twice now, uh, they, um, that's the case. Now, here's the deal. So we're, we're winding down the first quarter. Got three minutes to go in the first quarter. Uh, you have to keep in mind, Grays Creek gets the ball at the beginning of the third quarter. No, it's going to be Union Pines. Oh, wait, no, you're right. You're correct. Union Pines went three and out to start there. Yes. Okay. No. You're right. Union Pines does get the ball at the third quarter because Grace Creek got the ball first and marched, and down marched the field right down the field. Okay, that is great. So folks, this is this is broadcasting at its finest here. We got it going on we, in, the booth, hey, in the booth. First game of the year, baby. And the formation, Grace Creek's line. Oh, excuse me, Union Pines is lined up. Finkelstein gets it and tries to get a little bit of nope. Oh no, it's a fake, and it's all the way up the sideline. A cut, and this is number fourteen. And that is Ethan Biggs. And the flash is living up to his name a little bit there. See, that's what I'm talking about. It gives him a little bit of a strut. He, See? Finkelstein even fooled me. I thought he was going bootleg right. And the next thing you know, I'm hearing cheer and I'm hearing cowbells. Ethan Biggs, the ju the junior running back, the flash, five foot eight, 165 pounds. That is a play that Union Pines desperately needed. Yes, they did. So now they're on the other side of the field. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a, let's see, 20, a 30-yard run there. Because they got the ball in about the 31. So 29, 30 yards, a very big play for Union Pines. So now, first and 10, that's a Shed Depot first down, by the way, folks, in case you were wondering. Thank you to all of our sponsors. You're joining us here. This is Blake Rogers with Don Clayton at Will Hort Stadium in Moore County, Union Pines High School on a beautiful Friday night. So far, the game, is the outcome has not been as beautiful as we would have liked, but still a long way to go. And we've got an opportunity for Union Pines here to cut into this deficit, 14-0. And I tell you what, Blake, uh, we've got a timeout on the field. So at this time, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. All right. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Legacy commercial and residential construction. All right, All right, and here goes Union Pines lined up in the formation. Finkelstein claps his hand. The tight end shifts to the left. A handoff is right up the middle, and a tackle made immediately smothered up. That looks like it's number 51 for Grays Creek, and that is Nathan Fowler, junior defensive end. The runner was number 22, Damon Bremer. Uh, he is a senior fullback, six foot two, 220 pounds. No gain on the play. Didn't get much there at all. 
Looks like maybe a yard, Don, maybe. But actually, now that I'm looking at the spot, it might have gave him half a yard at best. So it's going to be second and ten, second and nine and a half. You call it, flip a coin, doesn't matter. Two receivers to the right. Finkelstein will take the snap. One back. Oh, it looks like a, the Union Pines just got away with a false start there by the running back. Finkelstein cuts it left, and he's going hard, and he lowers the shoulder and goes straight into the belly of the Grays Creek defensive back, and that is number 21, Isaiah Morales, free safety, who takes him down. But Finkelstein with another Shed Depot first down, and we talked a lot about this kid in the pregame show and last week. It's really going to need to be Finkelstein and his arm and also a little bit of twinkle toes there, Don. Yeah, that was a great run. Now he's feeling it now. Now he's he's feeling it now, uh, Blake. Uh, Finkelstein, he is feeling it and uh, wouldn't be surprised if uh, he calls his number again. I'm looking to see that. And I tell you, he's doing a good job with those handoffs uh, with good fakes. He's really committing to it. And you got when you're a quarterback, you have to make that play, whether you're going to commit or you're going to pull back. So we'll see if Finkelstein can keep going. We got a first and oh, no, excuse well, it's a flag on the field, a flag on the field. So we're waiting to see what the call is here. Looks like it's against Gray's Creek. I'm not sure what that flappy arm motion was there, Don. Um, watched a lot of football. Never seen an official do that. But nonetheless, that's going to move Union Pines up and give them a first down because they were actually a little short <coughs> on the first down. So now it's going to be first and goal from first the 10-yard line. Looks like it would be maybe first and 10 on the 11. So not maybe not quite first and goal. But close. Close. <clears throat> Tomato. And it may be. We'll see. Tomato. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll see what we got here. We got two receivers lined up, one far right, one deep on the uh, inside here. It is first and goal. First and goal. Okay. So we were close. I, wasn't, I couldn't quite make it out from here, Don. So we're still working out, kinking out the irons here. Union Pines has a real good chance to answer uh, a minute and a half into this drive, and they're really knocking on the door, and we've got a REMAX red zone. Okay. Let's see if Finkelstein can uh, make something happen here. Okay. Well, something's going on with the play clock, so I'm not sure. Yeah, we do have an issue on the field, waiting on the officials. Two minutes, 15 seconds side, to go here in the first judge quarter. Side picks up his flag. Maybe they're going to keep time on the field. Here we go. And the referee was just reiterating for the scorer's box the penalty, which was, let's call the, um, I'm not sure what that was, Don. I got it. We're going to find out. We're going to get our research investigative team on it. Finkelstein's going to take the ball in the shotgun position. He's got a, a back right behind him. The tight end shifts to the right. Two receivers to the right. The snap is over his head. Finkelstein's got to do something. He's got nowhere to go, and he is swallowed up in the backfield all the way at the 25. Boy, oh, boy. I don't, they just keep uh, shooting themselves in the foot, I can tell you that. Another miscommunication there, a misplay by the center, and they've got to get that ball down. And just when you thought Union Pines was on the verge of doing something, it is now a second and goal from the 25-yard line, Don. Talk about a difficult situation. Very difficult situation because you keep uh, shooting yourself in the foot. And, uh, you know, at some point in time, you're going to have to get yourself together here. Your, your center and your quarterback, you got to – Let's see. The, I'm not sure this the, this uh, center what what year he is, but you got a senior quarterback, man. You you can't be doing this. this is middle school stuff. So maybe uh, they'll go away from the shotgun here, Don, and get more to a little bit of the uh, standard snap there and do some three five step drops for Finkelstein. But once again, the shotgun formation. We got to run up the gut to the left, but not much cooking there. Maybe a yard or two at the very very most. Not much for Union Pines. Great play by uh, Grays Creek defensive line to break through there and stop that. So now we got a third and goal. And here, Don, you're just thinking maybe we can get it to the 10 and kick a field goal? That's what I'm thinking. You know, get it between the hash marks. But Give ourselves a chance for some points. Yeah, know which hash mark your kicker prefers and just run towards that hash mark and, uh, you know, try to pick up five or ten yards and at least get on the board at this point. This really is a shame because uh, Union Pines was really knocking on the door there. They got all the way into the re uh, red zone for our REMAX red zone. First time for them tonight. Three receivers to the right. Well, excuse me, one tight end, two receivers to the right. Finkelstein takes it, rolls out to the right. He's looking for a man. He's, He's got him deep, but he underthrown. But it is caught, and it is a Union Pines touchdown. A great pass from Ben Finkelstein. And it looks like on the catch, we have not quite sure, but I'll get you that in just one moment, folks. But I can tell you that was another great pass from Finkelstein. He was underthrown a little bit. But I tell you, he got there, and that looks to be that Brendan Ortega, wide receiver. He is a senior, so senior to senior, 5'11 to 170 pounds. Ortega on the catch. So 
Blake, that is exactly what they needed, sir. And uh, so a very good play call. You know, uh, that's why I'm not down there on the sidelines making calls because I might play a little bit more conservative and run it and try to kick a field goal. But at the same time, it was a great play, a great pass. It was just over the defender's stretch. 23-yard touchdown pass, and Don, tonight, Union Pines Vikings have two 20-plus yard plays. Want to take a guess at how many they had last week, Don? Two. Zero. Oh, so zero. already off to a very good start offensively. Last week it was the defense and the special teams. This week it looks like it might need to be the offense because Grace Creek is running with them. So now we've got a timeout on the field. And while we do that, folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. Grace Creek 14, Union Pines 6. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. And welcome back, folks, to Will Hort Stadium here in beautiful Moore County, North Carolina. Union Pines Trails 6 to Grays Creek 14. Just scored a touchdown. Looks like we're going to say no to the extra point because we got Ben Fickelstein and the offense back out there. So we'll see if Union Pines can punch it in for two. In the backfield, you've got, looks like Russ Shaper, a.k.a. Russ the Bus, the name he likes to go by, according to his dad. Uh-oh. Oh, we got a fumbled snap, a tough play here going around, and that's going to be a no good on the PAT for Union Pines. So obviously, Coach Truesdale knows something we don't know. Maybe the kicker is not feeling so great tonight. Maybe he's got a thing going on with his foot. Because I saw him kick some extra points last week, Don, and I tell you, kids got a leg. We're going to find out in just a few minutes here with this kickoff that Union Pines is about to show us. But, again, I'm not a big fan of that play call. I mean, you know, now it's uh, it's 14-6 to 6 with uh, you know, two minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. But the good news about that drive was not the two penalties on Union Pines where, again, they shot themselves in the foot a couple of times. But the impressive, play, the impressive thing was that drive only took a minute. One minute, and they got six on the board. Well, that's what you're looking for. And now let's see if the defense can come out and do something. And, you know, I'm not sure – What's going on here with the kicking situation? But we did see on the first kickoff, they didn't go deep. So maybe that could be uh, something to do with it, Don, with their kicker. It might be ailing it a little bit, or maybe they have a backup filling in. I have to get some more information on you for that, folks, because normally their regular kicker is number six, John Cannon, and I don't see him on the field. Uh, Looks you like the young man kicking the football is going to place it down. Let's see if we can't get his name for the folks listening at home. Once again, this is the Union Pines football brought to you by... NFL, excuse me, folks, I'm going to get myself together here. The NHFS Game of the Week. So now Union Pines is getting ready to kick it off. I will tell you right now, that is not their normal kicker. You know how I know. He is not on either one of my roster lists. Well, I tell you what, he's got a leg, and he kicks it all the way past the down the 15. Grays Creek on the return, and a big play there. Busted up in the backfield. Mr. Gilbert. A great job there by Gilbert, and that right there, if he doesn't make that tackle, Grays Creek probably gets another 20 yards on that play, Don. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, the kicker situation. Now, you, you see number 90 coming off right here. I don't have him on either of my uh, scorecards, so I'm going to try to get his name for us because that was an impressive kick for whoever that young man is. So perhaps they don't have their starting kicker on the field tonight. That would make a lot of sense because, like I said last week, they had th uh, four PATs and four for four, which is not always the case uh, given in high school football, Don, as you know. Yeah, and just uh, a real quick score update here in the uh, Sand Hills Athletic Conference. Lee County is up against Overhills 14-7. to Lee County is going to be a good team this year. And the snap there to Davis. He hands it off to Webb. Webb cuts to the right, then back to the middle, and he's fighting for yardage. And he gets about four yards. There is a penalty. A late flag. And, and probably going to be on number 70 for Grays Creek because he came out of there like he was guilty. Hands up in the air. Xavier I Barrett. So let's see what the call is on the field. I'm going to say it's against Grays Creek. Let's see. I've been wrong many times before. I'm sure your wife would tell you that's not the case at all. Never oh, wrong. No. Never wrong. No, you're <laughs> absolutely 
Absolutely not. <laughs> How about woman. that time where I gave you a technical? Oh, well, you know, Don. Was I that, wrong then? I, well, you know, the coach in me wants to say yes, but uh, the, the friend and I broadcaster would say, uh, uh, I think I, it was a well-deserved one. Okay. I got my money's worth out of it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I got my money's worth out yeah, of you it. You did. Me and Don go way back. I've known him for years with our uh, basketball program down in Sanford, and I've watched his, his son grow up, and now his son is a teenager. And Don told me earlier he's living his best life. He's got a girlfriend, yeah. a job, a car. Man, folks, to be 16 again. Do you remember I'm, what that was like, Don? I'm telling you right now. Oh, gosh, man, oh, man. Here we are now. Clear it. So we've got a – still waiting to see what's going on on the field here. we got a long break in the action. Looks like that was against Union Pines. It does look like Union Pines is backing up. It is a penalty against Union Pines. Personal foul. Can't catch the number. No, I take it back. It's actually, it is. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oof, that is a killer, Don. That Once is, again, I mean, you know, I just don't understand it. Well, I mean, you, you have to be more disciplined than these that, young, don't you? I know it's early in the season, but how many is that? Eight seven. penalties? Seven? That's seven, early on. And Grace Creek still has zero. Union Pines is having a lot of difficulties on communication, and Coach Truesdale is going to call a timeout. Yeah, I don't blame him. And get the guys over. So while they're doing that, let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back to Will Hort Stadium. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Davis in the backfield. He takes the snap. He throws a little bubble screen out to the right, and it's incomplete. Fumbled by, excuse me, not fumbled, but didn't catch it. Jamal Gotti, a wide receiver slash cornerback in his senior season. A nice little uh, draw up there in that play to the bubble screen, but Union Pines did a good job of getting through the coverage, and Gotti just could not corral it, Don. Yeah, so folks, we are actually going to be in the second quarter now. Uh, so that was uh, actually not a timeout. And so we ended the first quarter 14-6, to six, Grays Creek, and now we are into the second quarter. Second down to 10, Bears. Thank you there, partner. And now we got uh, trippers, two receivers to the left, one to the right, a back, uh, the handoff to Webb, number eight, and he slides, slashes right up the middle to the right all the way for a Shed Depot first down, slicing through this defense like a butter knife through butter on a hot summer day. In North Carolina, Don, that's going to be a first down there, and Grays Creek is once again moving the football and moving it with purpose. Let's see if Union Pines can make a stand here. Fresh set of downs on the 44-yard line on the Union Pines side of the field. 14-6, 11.30 to go, and the clock, clock is ticking. Grays Creek is going to line up here. we got one receiver to the left. That's going to be – oh, we got a little trickery here. That's Tyler Davis on the left side, and the hand actually is going to be up the middle, a handoff to the quarterback, and he goes all the way up to the – 35-yard line, according to the side judge here. So that's going to be close to a first down, but not quite. Going to be second and about one or two. So Tyler Davis is doing it all on the field for the Bears tonight, Don. Yeah, Jeremiah Walmack uh, running back for Union Pines. He's a junior. He's checking into the game. Uh, and he's also a, uh, a running back linebacker and running back for Union Pines. We've got double backs in the backfield. Eye formation here. I like it. Some old school football. Two receivers to the left. A handoff directly to the fullback. And that is number four, Elijah Watson, the big tight end. And he's going to get a first down. No problem. That's another Shed Depot first down. And Grace Creek is moving ever so close to another Remax red zone there, Don. Yeah, first down again for Grace Creek. So um, you're going to be having uh, uh, probably about um, – uh, looks like to me, actually, do they give it a first down? Yeah, they oh, give it a first down. They're going to stop here and measure the chains. Yeah, they're going to measure. That's what I was looking at. Yeah, they're going to measure. Cause good the, call uh, there, partner. Yep. I missed that one. Yep. This is going to be tight, very tight. 
or did they give him the first down? Actually, they, they, yeah, they gave it the first down. All right, so we're good there. The okay. Checking back in is um, the um, uh, linebacker Christopher Gilbert, number seven for Union Pines. An interesting score uh, with the um, San Jose Athletic Conference uh, uh, team, Scotland, who is playing at Hoggard. That score is tied 8-8. Eight to eight. Mm, That's an interesting score for a football game there, Don. Yep. And the snap to Davis, he hands off once again to Watson, who is using that big body and just steamrolling through this defensive line of the Union Pines Vikings. And once again, another positive play. It looks like maybe three or four yards. I'll tell you, Don, I'm looking to see if Union Pines can make a big stop here and get the momentum back on their side because if Grace Creek scores another touchdown, you're looking 21-6, you've got to score in the next possession. Maybe a fumble, maybe a strip, maybe a sack, something to push these guys back toward midfield and get the ball back in a decent position to give yourself a chance. 100%. I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, And it's starting to cool down a little bit now, so maybe the boys are starting to, to kind of get their rhythm, get their feel, because uh, right now the longer the defense stays out on the field, when it's hot, it's muggy, it's humid, you know, it just can wear a defense down. So they need to – a good stop here would be good for the defense. And so now we've got Davis lining up on the left side here as a receiver. The snap goes, and there's a run there by Grays Creek. That is number 15. There's that a flag. Is Elijah O'Keeley. He is – sorry if I mispronounced that incorrectly. He is a backup quarterback, six-foot sophomore, 180 pounds, so he's coming off the field now. Looks like uh, John Sherman is trying a lot of different things with his quarterback. We've seen him line up at the wide receiver's position, a little bit of a uh, funky wildcat in the running back position. Tyler Davis has got some legs. Haven't seen him use his arm much tonight, but I tell you what, the kid's got some speed. Well, he does have speed. And, and checking in uh, on the previous play was number 10, Jeremiah Walmack, and he came in and he made the tackle. So good for that young man, uh, junior, five foot 10, 180 pounds. So that we had the first penalty on the Bears, and so they're going to be uh, – Coming back for 10 yards, so to make second down in about 18, it looks like. Well, a good uh, opportunity here for Union Pines. We just talked about they needed something to swing in their way for momentum for their defense. Looks like we've got number 15, Elijah Oakley, again checking in. That's the backup quarterback. So let's see what kind of formation Grays Creek lines up here. The referee has wound the clock, and we are live. Grays Creek is in the huddle. Union Pines defense on the field looking to make a stop second and 18. Let's see what we got here. We've got a receiver, two receivers to the right. Two backs in the backfield, the handoff, no effect, another bubble screen, and it's thrown behind the receiver. And I tell you, he is lucky that that sailed because if that ball would have been uh, stayed in bounds, it was behind the line of scrimmage, and it would have been a live ball. Yeah, and uh, so another score to report for another uh, team in the Sand Hills Athletic Conference, Pinecrest. Now, Pinecrest is 4A, and they've always been very powerful, uh, but they haven't competed too much in this uh, division as of late, but they are right now up 14 to nothing against Anson. They did lose last week uh, against Rollsville at home 28 to 52. That's not like Pinecrest. That's a big, big score difference there. Once again, Elijah is again taking the snap, and he hands off to Webb, and Webb is dashing toward the first down line marker, and he's very, very, very close. Oh, man, a big shift in momentum there for Grays Creek, and Jason Truesdale, hands on his hips, very disappointed with that opportunity there because even if it is fourth down, which I believe it is, fourth and short, you got to believe Grays Creek is going for this. Yeah, oh, absolutely, uh, no doubt. Now, we're going to be about fourth down in two, maybe three yards, it looks like here. Ball's on the Union Pines 24-yard line. So, once again, two receivers to the right, one back in the backfield. And it's, once again, the backup, number 15, Oakley, taking the snap. Oh, no, they might just be trying to draw them off sides here. And, yep, that's exactly what they're drawing. So, Grace Creek will take a timeout. They're not going to take any chances, or maybe they just want to talk about things. And yeah. they wanted to see what Union Pines' defense was going to line up as. Maybe but, we should pay the bills right now? I tell you, I think so. Maybe we'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Grace Creek and 
Davis takes it to the right and cuts out to the first right. First down. He's got an easy first down, and then he lowers his shoulder again on the sideline. This young man is playing some physical oh, well, football. We, got a flag. we have a flag after More the play. More laundry. Looks like it, from that, my perspective here in the booth, Don, when you normally see a flag after that, it's going to be a late hit. We're going to see he's going to call it right now. Holding. Oh, offense. no, second, holding yep. offense. Yeah, now they're shooting themselves in the foot. I tell you, that's the second one for Grays Creek. But the question is going to be, is that going to, is the first down going to stand? No. So okay. it's going to be holding. Because I know sometimes it depends on where the holding happened, yeah. if it so did. It so was, it was, uh, so it's not going to stand. It's going to be fourth down and about eight. So my guess here is that they may try to pin Union Pines deep, or they may go for it and just take their chances. Well, it looks like Grays Creek is going to keep the offense on the field. The backup quarterback Again, that's going to call him Elijah because I keep mispronouncing his last name to that young man, so don't want to do that if his parents are out there listening. Young man is going to line up and take the snap. Oh, no, it looks like uh, we've got Tyler Davis again to the left. See what kind of trick we got here. He rolls out to the oh, left. Oh, wide open. And he's wide yep. open, oh, but he it's dropped. dropped. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Tyler mm -hmm. Davis, the quarterback, mm -hmm. lined up as – oh, but another flag on sure the field. Is. We're going to be here until midnight if they keep throwing these let's flags. Let's hope it's not on Union Pines. Let's hope it's on – oh, it looks to be like – Grays Creek is celebrating. Yep. Or no, they may be calling a player down. No, it looks like it's going to be on Grays Creek because Union Pines is coming off the field. Decline. They're going to decline this. Yep. And that is on Grays Creek. Not the sure. First down, Union Pines. Not sure what the penalty was, but nonetheless, a great defensive stand there by the Vikings, Don. Yeah, absolutely. A great defensive stand. So obviously, Union Pines is going to decline this uh, penalty and they're going to take over first down and 10. Looks like uh, that uh, the line judge is going to take it up to about the 45, maybe 47, 47 oh, of wow. UP. So first and 10 with about uh, 53 yards to go for a touchdown so for Union Pines. That's, if that's the case, the penalty wasn't declined. It was after the play, and it was accepted. Yep. So it must have been Very some good kind call. of uh, unsportsmanlike yep. conduct. 15 or yards, yeah. Good call. Something of that nature there. So yep. now Union Pines with a great chance. To come within, well, they're already in one possession, they're eight, down eight points, but a good chance to cut this thing down to two, potentially tie it with an extra point, a two-point play, or bring it in with one extra point. So we got Finkelstein in the backfield. We've got two receivers right. We've got one safety deep for Grays Creek, and it looks like they're going to play a little bit of man-to-man -man coverage with some zone over the top with the linebackers, Don. Yeah, it looks like that is going to be the case. I'm not sure what we're waiting on here. We've got more calls from the official who has for the fourth time this. That's sideline warning. Sideline warning, okay. So it would be nice if we had a mic on that young man, but we do not. So it is a Shed Depot first down for Union Pines. And here we go. The snap to Finkelstein. He hands it off. Another up. flag. There's a flag. Every I'm, single play, there's a flag. I'm thinking that one's going to be either an illegal motion on Union Pines or an encroachment on Gray's Creek because I saw some movement up front, Don. I couldn't quite tell where it was coming from. Yeah, it could be lined up offsides too from where the flag comes from. We'll see from so the side judge. Let's wait for the call here. False start, yeah. That's a – I tell you, I don't like seeing those false start calls after the play's already been run. The play that the play did, if we're going to have a dead play, these young men out there exerting a lot of effort for a play that's – but, you know, it's difficult sometimes to get the attention. So that's, once again, another penalty for Union Pines. And by my count, Don, that's eight for them and two for Grace Creek. Yeah, that's uh, – you know, look, it's going to be extremely difficult. I don't care if you're playing peewee ball, high school, college, professional. If you lose the – uh, the penalty battle, uh, you, 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 it's going to be very difficult to win the ball game. So here we go. Eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Finkelstein lines up. He's got a tight end, a right receiver, two receivers to the right in, a back, in the backfield. He hands it off, but he fakes. Oh, and he's going to be sacked and swallowed up. Christian Walker, the senior strong safety with a big play, showing off the muscles, and that's going to be a loss of about eight, which is going to make this a second and a country mile there, partner. Yeah, it's going to second and 20, uh, it looks like, is what it's going to be, and uh, or second and maybe 18 or 19 uh, yards to go. So it's going to be brought back to the Union Pines 39-yard line. They have started every possession in their own uh, backfield, but uh, looks like here they're going to need to get all the way, partner, to the uh, Grays Creek 43. So let's see what we got here. Finkelstein again, one back with him, a tight end and two receivers. The shot out of the snap, snap out of the shotgun. 
Oh, oh. And it's almost picked off there. A dangerous play, a dangerous throw, and that looks to be for Grays Creek number 18, Timothy Lamone, who had it in his hands and it popped out. And a bad read there by Finkelstein. He threw it to the first read, didn't work through it, and that's something Coach Truesdale talked about before the game. He wants Finkelstein to take his time and go through his reads, and if the play's not there, Don, young man, just get rid of that ball and move on to live another day. Yeah, because he got really lucky on that. I mean, that ball hit – uh, that young man from Hoke, I mean from uh, Grays Creek, right in between the numbers. So just like that, we're shifting back to where it's now Union Pines, who just needs to get a little bit of yardage on this play to try to shift field position. They're on the 39-yard line. Finkelstein will take the snap with two backs to his right side strong. A Ooh. blitz gets through. Finkelstein avoids the tackle. He guts up the middle. A good job of making something out of nothing as we talked about getting something there. Looks like about a five-yard positive play, but it was very close to being another sack from Christian Walker who just plowed through the backfield, and yeah. it was like the blocker wasn't even there. Yeah, and again, Ethan Biggs there on the block uh, saved uh, the, the sack. But uh, regardless, it's uh, fourth down and 13, so they're going to send their punting unit on. So it's a disappointing drive for Union Pines there. However, they're still only down 14-6. to six. So, Don, uh, big picture this thing for us. You punt this ball down here. You hope to get them pinned back maybe behind the 40, 30-yard line. You have a good stand. You get the golf ball back. You score a goal in the halftime down one, maybe even tied. Yep, senior Brody Trenell is punting for Union Pines. And that's actually a very good punt, and it's going to take a very favorable bounce. Keep bouncing, keep going. Oh, my goodness, beauty even better than I could have thought. Yeah, that is a 50-yard punt. Wow, uh, talk about. Man. And he's not even listed as a kicker. He is a senior. He plays linebacker and, linebacker and wide receiver, uh, 6'1", 185 pounds, Brody Trenell. So a very talented young man for sure, 50-yard punt. Well, I think Coach Truesdale would like to uh, want to put that one in the back pocket. I think he just found his new punter, Don. So now Grace Creek is pinned deep in their own 20-yard line. Looks like maybe at about the 15 there, Don, maybe a little closer. I thought that ball was 17. See, I thought it bounced a little farther than that, but I could be mistaken. Uh, as I'm getting my old age here. My eyesight's not as good as it once was. Yeah, talk about old age. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, Grace Creek's going to line up with the football. Looks like we got, uh, again, Tyler Davis is on the – is lined up to the right as a receiver. Not quite sure what Grays Creek's got going on here. They've got an inexperienced quarterback, but he's just going to hand it off and a lot of space right up the middle for – looks Web, like – Webb is just an amazing athlete. He is just cutting through that defense. And remember, Union Pines defense has been on the field for the majority of the night. And that number uh, eight, Javon Webb, is just uh, only a junior. He'll, he'll be back next year for Grays Creek. But, man, what a talented – running back for uh, the Grace Creek football squad. Yep. And just like that, another Shed Depot first down. So here Grace Creek leading 14-6 to at Wilhort Stadium. We've got Grace Creek with the football, and now we have a looks like maybe a timeout on the field. Not quite sure. Let's find out before we make any decisions here. We've got the side judge coming in. No, he's just allowing substitutions, I believe, and they're going to reset the play clock. Checking in for Union Pines and is a lot Owen St. John. A lot of folks, if you see the referee, it, he's not raising the roof with his hands. He's reselling, resetting that play clock. So now Grays Creek is going to snap the ball, and they're going to hand it off, and they're going to go up. And a tough play, but a good job of sticking with it by number seven, Christian Gilbert, bringing down number four, Elijah Watson. And, Don, what you talked about earlier, he didn't try to tackle him by the shoulder pads. He wrapped him up on the waist, and he brought him down to the ground. And, oh, no, looks like we've got an injured player on the field. Yeah, he did it first. He did it first, and that's, that's Christopher Gilbert. He did it first, but then he brought those arms down, wrapped them around that waist, and brought that young man down. That's how you tackle. Exactly. So, unfortunately, we have an injured player, but he bounces he's up, right he's up. up break he's points. hot. He's hot. He's hot. All right, so we were going to take a uh, quick commercial break, but let's see how quickly we can get back to the action. Actually, we are going to throw it to a yeah. commercial break yeah. real quick because we Injury have a time timeout. Out. timeout on the field. We'll be right back. Grave Street 14, Union Pine 6. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken and I approve this message, paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. We're going to jump back into the action there. Sorry we missed that play. That was a handoff to Tyler Davis. 
from the backup, Elijah O'Keeley. You know, when you get a check-in, they want to make a play right away. So once again, checked in on the previous play, number 15, Owen St. John, and he is a senior defensive lineman. He also plays quarterback. He is six foot four, 190 pounds, came in and made the tackle. Yes, it was a gain of about seven yards. However, it is third down and three. So again, Union Pines needs to stop here, Park. They sure do. Let's the clock is ticking under five minutes to go. Third and about three to go, maybe a long three. Let's see if Union Pines can make a stop here, get this ball back, and put some points on the board before halftime. Very fortunate to be in the position oh, they're in. Oh, first down. And we have some movement, <laughs> oh and my. Union Pines is pointing they're to pointing. Grays Creek, and yeah. Grays Creek is pointing at Union Pines. Yeah. So let's wait for the call from the official. I did not see movement on the offensive line. However, they are walking backwards, so it's going to be – False start, Grays Creek. Well, just like that, a third and three goes to a third and eight. So now Union Pines has a great opportunity to get this football back. And more importantly, Don, that stops the clock. And, you know, less than five minutes to go, Union Pines has two timeouts. You get the ball with three minutes to go, four and three and a half to go, you've got plenty of time to score. Absolutely. They have to figure out their game. And, you know, the, the offensive squad needs to be down here figuring out what in the world they're doing because they need to get back out on that field, next possession, score, the touchdown. The snap and then a handoff and then a big run. Oh, no, I tell you, that's, that's going to be down. a first down. It's handed off to Elijah Wilson. You who, mean we don't have any flags? That's amazing. Well, no laundry on the play, but I will tell you, Elijah Wilson, who is a mostly tight end and defensive end, Coach John Sherming utilizing him a lot tonight in the running back position. And uh, no wonder because he's 6'2 and 205, Don. Yeah, that's a big boy. I would not. What year is he there, partner? He is a uh, senior. Okay. So I would not want to have to tackle him. So just like that. Shed Depot first down, and that's going to move the sticks for Union Pines. Tyler Davis is going to take the snap in the backfield. He's in this uh, shotgun. He's got two tight ends lined up on the right side, one uh, running back to his right and two receivers to his right. Uh, fake handoff, not much going there. Tyler Davis is going to take off and use the Jets and get a lot of space and a lot of yards. And that close to being a late hit. No flag on the play, but he gained about 15 yards. And once again, Tyler Davis is shredding this defense down, running Offense for Grace Creek has been very impressive, and Union Pines has at times stood up. But I'll tell you, when the Grace Creek is able to get a big play, they get one. He is they, that young man is finding the seams, partner. He is yes. finding the seams, and he is moving quick. The old uh, football adage: you turn it up and turn it tight and let it go. So they are now in Union Pines territory. Yet once again, are the Bears. So it looks like Elijah Oakey is going to take the snap from the backfield. He hands off to Webb. Webb finds a little bit of space, but he is swallowed up nice by number ten, Jeremiah yep. Womack. A Again, going to call his name. Good Several call. tackles for him tonight. Great play there. So now second to about eight. So let's see if Union Pines can make some plays. And now checking into the game, coming out is number 22, and that is Damon Bremen. And going in is Will Whitaker, number 77. So Grace Creek with about a second and eight to go. Looks like, again, Tyler Davis is going to line up to the left alongside of Camden Brack. Quarterback Elijah Oakley Webb in the backfield. Hands off to Webb. Webb again finding the space, but this time brought down quickly after about a three or three yard gain there. Couldn't quite tell who was in on the tackle for Union Pines, but a lot of bodies in there doing a good job of working together as a team because they've struggled to bring these guys down one on one. On your feet. So here we go. Probably, if you, I would venture to guess and say, partner, this is the biggest play of the game for the Union Pines defense right here. Oh, no doubt. Got to get a stop and get this football back for your offense and try to make a play because if Union, if Grace Creek gets much farther into the red zone, then you're looking at at least three points with the field goal. So the snap, the handoff to Tyler Davis, who finds space, and he's going to get a first down again. Another Shed Depot first down, and Union Pines is struggling to get them off the field. That's three or four times now in the last couple of drives. They got a third and favorable for the defense, and they just can't, qu can't quite break through that offensive line and enough space for Grays Creek to just run it right down the middle. So I, so I tell you what, you know, I'm really impressed with Union Pines and their student section. I mean, they, they really brought the community out today. And I also want to give a shout-out to Grays Creek because they, too, they are one hour away from here and uh, at this stadium, and they brought a lot of fans to this game. Sure did. So Grays Creek is going to line up. Two receivers to the left, Davis and Bragg. A fake handoff and then handoff to Wilson, who just runs over. Yeah. A Union Pines player, and that they look. You know what they call that? Yep, he trucked him. That was the backup quarterback for Union Pines, number 15, Owen St. John, 6'4 and 190, but uh, needed about an extra 20 pounds if he wanted to stand up to that big fella because Elijah Wilson just put him down. 
Yeah, he, he only gained a yard on the play, but uh, I guarantee you big number 70 of Union Pines figured it out right quick who that young man was. Well, I tell you, Don, that's actually about more about three yards there because it looks like we've got about a second and seven here. So either way, positive place, and he's going to make them think about getting there twice. So the snap, the handoff to Webb again. He finds space, but he's swallowed up quickly by Christian Gilbert in on the tackle along with a couple other Union Pines players. So maybe a, a gain of two there, partner, would you say? Looks like maybe about two, yeah, about two yards. Yep, Looks like so about third down. Third and five. Now, yeah, I tell you what, now, I'm not a statistician. We've got other guys that do that, but it'd be interesting to find out at halftime how many third down conversions Gray Creek, Gray's Creek has uh, made. Oh, tonight. yes. They've made a lot of third down conversions. I'd be very interested. And none bigger than this one here. One minute to go. Clock still going. The snap, the handoff to Webb again to the right side. He finds space. Touchdown. And yep. he is stopped short of the goal line. They're trying to get that ball out, partner. But that was a big play, and the clock runs. Looks like Gray's Creek is going to call a timeout to stop that clock, and right now Union Pines has a no answer at all for Javon Webb. And now the clock, no timeout, excuse me, I forget on the high school, on the first down the clock stops, so now it runs for the official with the signal of his arm. Grace Creek is back out there, and it looks like they're going to try to do one of two things here. Score and give no, Union Pines no time. Now we got a timeout on the field. Yep. And while we take a quick timeout, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Union Pines, trail 6-14. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. And welcome back, folks. Blake Rogers here on the broadcast. My partner and good friend Don Clayton here. Grays Creek leads 14. Union Pines 6. Grays Creek threatening here in the Remax red zone. Just picked up another Shed Depot first down. Let's see if they can punch it in here or if Union Pines can make a stand and keep this a one-possession game before half, partner. they got to go 10 yards. It's first down and goal at the 10, so we'll see what uh, the Bears have up their sleeve. And if I was a betting man, I'd say this ball is going to find its way into the hands of Tyler Davis or Javon Webb. And there is Davis. He takes it. He's swallowed immediately, but he spins out and cuts to the right. And a good job of Union Pines of bringing him down and not allowing any positive yardage. Looks like a couple players in on the tackle there. I tell you what, for, uh, for the Bears, number big 72, that's old big old Gerald White. He is a senior. Uh, he's five foot ten, and he just barreled his way. And that was uh, Harley Moyer as well in there on the tackle for Union Pines, number 11, safety slash halfback, 5'10", 170-pound sophomore. Looks like we have another timeout on the field here by not quite sure. Uh, Union Pines, I believe. So instead of taking another break here, this is going to be a quick 20-second timeout. We'll stay with you and recap so far in the first half. Union Pines, eight penalties. Grays Creek, three. Nothing in the way of turnovers so far, so that is a positive for Union Pines. But they have struggled on third and long defense. Grays Creek has ran the ball to Mars and back tonight. So let's see if in the second half they can make yeah. some adjustments. But first things first, partner, got to make a stop here. Yeah, you got to make a stop here. Absolutely. You mean, listen, you, you, you got to go into the uh, – you can't go in under, with uh, just uh, down more than one score. I mean, you got to go in – only down one score, you're good, right? But you go in down two scores, you know, not so good. And keep in mind, Union Pines does get the ball at the beginning of the third quarter. So, exactly. With that in mind, if they can get a stop here and get this ball back to start the second half, they've got a chance. But first, we've got to see what's going to happen on the field. We've got two receivers to the left, Davis and Bragg. Webb in the backfield takes the snap, a low one. Oh, and the quarterback's got nowhere to go, and he's swallowed up, but he finds a way to get away, and he's still going to be tackled down. Trying to find that uh, sideline. He can't find it. Not able to get out of the bounds. The clock runs. And I don't think Grace Creek has Nine, any timeouts. Eight. They're going to try to quickly get they to the line. They are not going to score. But they're not going to get this off nope. unless the official gives them a very generous spot and gets out of there. One second, and no play. No, no, no play. snap. No snap. And that half will time. be the end of the first half. So Woo, Union Pines. They might, cut, they might regret that later, uh, boss man. Yeah, I'll tell you what. And the quarterback was doing his best to get out of bounds, but he couldn't quite get there. And Davis takes his helmet off in frustration because Grace Creek going now, they got to be knowing they should be up 21-6. And Absolutely. Union Pines, they're feeling pretty good. Look, the guys are on the field. They're celebrating, congratulating the defense. So they're still in this ball game, partner. we got yeah. a barn burner to go. At, at, least, at least they should be up. 17-6, to six. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day. So yeah. poor clock management, in my opinion, on the sidelines of Grace Creek. With that being said, a strong first half in Union Pines, and we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with the Law, uh, Law, King's Law Halftime Show. Be back shortly. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed. 
where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the King's Law Halftime Show. This is Blake Rogers with my partner, Don Clayton, here in Wilhort Stadium in beautiful Moore County, North Carolina. Hot human, just the thing we like for some high school football on a beautiful Friday night. Don, Union Pines trails 6, uh, Grays Creek 14, but I tell you, some of the things I like so far from Union Pines, the defense struggled at times, but they make some plays when they had to. A couple goal line stands there for the Remax Red Zones, doing a good job of moving the sticks on the offense, just need a little bit more consistency and a little bit less penalties. Oh, a lot less penalties. Uh, no question about that. They've absolutely got to cut down on that. So on the Grays Creek side, I tell you what, they, they came out strong. Uh, it took them about uh, a quarter and a half before they even had their first penalty. So uh, Grays Creek is playing strong. Just a couple of shout-outs. First of all, uh, they may actually, before I give the shout-outs, they may actually regret not kicking that field goal at the end of the first half. We'll see what happens. But I do want to give a shout-out to number seven, their quarterback, Tyler Davis, is playing very well. But how about number eight, Javon Webb, the big, strong, junior running back. They're going to have him for one more year. I also want to give a shout out to the young man. You know, high school sometimes kicking the ball can't be, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to do. But the kicker for Grays Creek, number 80, Griffin McIntosh is two for two from the point after attempt. So again, Grays Creek come out strong. They came out fighting, but I think they might regret once Union Pine goes into halftime and they figure this thing out, they might regret not getting some points at the end of the first half. Yep, and you know, that's the coach's dilemma because you always want to try to push and be aggressive, but you got to take those points where you can get them. Now, high school is a little different than college and pros. These kids are not professional kickers. It's, as we talked about, it's very difficult to punt a football. So maybe John Sherman yes, yes. just wasn't comfortable with having him take that long field goal. But nonetheless, it is 6-14. Union Pines has had some strong things happen for them. Ben Fickelstein has played a solid game so far. The offensive line has struggled to maintain uh, the defensive line of Grays Creek, and so the running game has suffered a bit. So I'm looking to see them make some adjustments and maybe some assignments for double teams to help some of these running backs get free. And on the defensive side of the ball for Union Pines, Christian Gilbert is playing great so far. 
in on the mix of a lot of tackles and looking to see if Grays Creek continues to run the ball, if they're going to try to throw it a little more because they brought their backup in a little bit and he's done a couple bubble screens. But they haven't had anything vertically down the field. Union Pines has two 20-plus yards plays, so look for them to come out early and attack often in the second half. Grays Creek has been on the ground. You're absolutely right. And what Finkelstein needs to do is he needs to air it out a little. He had one errant pass that it was almost an interception at midfield, but Grays Creek dropped it. But I tell you, Finkelstein needs to get out there. He needs to communicate with his wide receivers. He needs to hit them on the route in the numbers, and they have a chance to win this ball game. Hit them in stride and let them fly, folks. This has been the Kings Halftime Show. We'll be back for the second half. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy commercial and residential construction. The Sand Hills residential and commercial builder of choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed, where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock, and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. 
Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com to check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and healthcare power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free, the consultation is free, the advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed, where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock, and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. 
I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. At Ace, your backyard is right in our backyard. So when you need to feed your grass, remove the weeds, or wrangle those leaves, go to the best place that delivers on top brands like Ego, Toro, and Steel. You can also order online for curbside pickup or get what you need delivered today. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their lawn care. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan. Featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes. To make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message, paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half. Union Pines trails Grays Creek. Union Pines 6, Grays Creek 14. Union Pines will receive the second half kickoff. They got their guys deep, ready to go. We got Re ready playing a second ago. We got the PA announcer keeping us hyped up. The crowd is into it here on a beautiful, hot afternoon and North Carolina Moore County Military Appreciation Night. Don, what are your thoughts so far? Yeah, it's hot. We're down in the Sand Hills. But I do want to give a quick shout out to Bob's Pizza in Vass, uh, North Carolina. They provide some uh, pizza up here in the booth for us, as well as R Squared, Robert and Robin, uh, provided some Dickie's Barbecue for us tonight. Another quick score update for the Sand Hills Athletic Conference, the SAC, Lee County. Let me catch you off there real oh, quick, yep. Don. We got the kickoff, and it's going up. It looks like it's going to be out of bounds again. Another one, so a penalty flag will come on the play. Go ahead and finish up there, partner. Yeah, Lee County's at home against non-conference overhills. They are up 21-7 to at half. 
so, yeah, again, kicking the ball out of bounds. You know, I gave the kicker a shout-out at ha uh, the uh, halftime report for making two out of two PATs, but that's twice he has kicked the ball out of bounds for a 15-yard penalty. A couple of unforced errors, if I'm going to bring up my John Mc McEnroe uh, quote there, a little bit of tennis. I was watching some of uh, the uh, Love major, tennis. major championships. My son plays tennis. I play tennis. Looking forward to seeing Serena Williams end her career on a high note. Always been a big fan of hers. But anyway, back to the action on the yep. field. Union Pines is going to line up here. Receiver to the left. Ben Finkelstein will be the quarterback again. We got the big old offensive line going out there. Let's see if they can set the tempo here. One to the right, two receivers to the left. Uh, back in the backfield, Finkelstein in the shotgun. And we have a penalty flag already, even before one second comes off the play clock there. So not the best start. Let's hope that's not on Union Pines, but it looks to be... On oh, penalty yeah, on illegal Union substitution there on uh, Union Pines. So number fourteen comes off. That would be uh, Ethan Biggs, and his nickname is the Flash. But not quick enough to get there on time for illegal substitution there. Unfortunately, five yard penalty. So instead of first and ten, it's gonna be first and fifteen. Twelve minutes to go. Not even a one play yet, and we will go fourteen six. Grays Creek once again. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Two backs in the backfield. Finkelstein hands it off. A play right up the middle, and not much of nothing there. For number 32, Russ Shaper, and that is Russ the Bus Shaper. Yep, and uh, he is. A, he also plays middle linebacker. He is a senior, and his dad is the strength and conditioning coach. I had a chance to meet his father earlier. Very nice young man. Very proud of his son. As a senior going to ECU, says that uh, Russ is looking to go to college and extend his education. So, congrats to that young man. I hope he has an excellent senior year. Importantly, on the field, but more importantly, off the field in the classroom, Don. I agree. And I, if I had to guess, I would say he also is a wrestler. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. One back in the backfield. Now he motions to the right. Finkelstein in the shotgun formation. He takes the snap. One step drop. He gives it out to number eight quickly, and he's going to get a couple of yards, not much. Jason Jernigan, wide receiver, junior, six foot two, 180 pounds on the catch. Very solid uh, play there. That's going to get them about seven yards. So now we're looking at third and eight. Very manageable. And, Don, we might have, actually, we're looking at about third and seven. So, let's see what Jason Truesdale's got in the playbook here. For very manageable. Yeah, very manageable here, partner. It looks like that uh, uh, it, it, if they can just make this play without committing an infraction. Before the snap, let me ask you this. Too soon for four down territory, Don? Yes. Okay, too soon for four down territory. So, Finkelstein's going to take the snap. Trips to the right. One to the left. He rolls out to the right. Oh, and he's got pressure coming. And he escapes and somehow gets rid of the football. Intercepted. And it is intercepted. Unfortunately, and that is number three. Yep. Um, looks like Khalil Joe, a senior wide receiver slash free safety. And, and the unfortunate thing, partner, is he had Jason Jernigan wide open, yes. and he overthrew him by about three yards. Unfortunate mistake there by Finkelstein. Trying to make a play, but maybe in that case, coach is going to tell him, young man, you're doing a great job. You had some pressure off the edge. And I tell you, that was number 44 for Grays Creek Jackson Carter, and he was coming in strong and fast. So now, just like that, a minute 30 in, Grays yeah, Creek. What a coulda, shoulda, but that should have been his second interception. Yep. So, unfortunately, that is the first turnover for Union Pines. One interception for Finkelstein, so one touchdown, one interception. Let's see if Union Pines can make a play here, maybe get forced to turn over their own here. Snap the handoff to Webb again. The big surprise, he's going to find some space and cut up for about a five-yard gain right to the 50-yard line at midfield. Side judge has got him right there at 50. So, I tell you, we've seen a lot of the backup quarterback here for Grays Creek, and that is number 15, Elijah Oakley. And he continues to hand the ball to Javon Webb, make his way to the sideline, and now Davis is going to come back in. Second and five, Grays Creek football at the 50. <laughs> Trying to get birds flying in the press box here tonight. But I tell you what, uh, you listen, it's like I said at the very beginning of the game. If you, in high school football or college football and pro football, it's all the same thing. If you keep running the same play and it keeps working, keep doing it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So once again, Tyler Davis is not at quarterback. He's lined up, and that's going to be to Watson. The big boy gets another seven or eight yards, and that's a shed depot first down. And right now, Union Pines is having all kinds of trouble stopping the run. Yep. Christopher Gilbert uh, on the tackle for Union Pines. All right, so here we go. Another first down for Grays Creek. Union Pines has got to find something here, some kind of answer to this offense to try to get the ball back as you, the clock is ticking, 9.30 to go in the second, uh, third quarter, excuse me. Ball is on the 43-yard line, and Grays Creek is inching closer to the red zone again. So here we go. Three backs in the backfield. Elijah will take the snap. One receiver to the left. He hands off to Davis. Davis finds some room. He cuts it out to the right. He's got even more room. He's, got, he's at the 30, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 29, 30-yard line. So another first down. 
And I tell you, it's death by a thousand cuts here for the Junior Pines defense right now, partner. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, there, there's been a lot of offense, man. They've been moving the chains. I mean, they've, 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 they've gone from the 20 to the 20 to the 20 to the 20. They're moving the chains, but the score is only 14 to 6. This is not out of the reach for Union Pines. It is not. So, But right now, first things first, we're going to have to get a stop and get this ball back because Gray's Creek right now looks unstoppable with the run. Yep, number 22, Damon Bremer. So great play there by him. This two senior, 220 pounds. Boy, that's a tall drink of water right there, Don. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Listen, there's face mask on uh, Union Pines. So face mask on Union Pines. Uh, we'll wait to see if it's going to be a 5 or a 15-yarder. So that's going to give Grays Creek more yardage as they march down the field. So let's see as uh, the line judge walks this off. And we're going to see if it's a five yard. So we got three, four, five. Nope, it's going to be a 15 yarder mm. face mask for the on the Vikings. So uh, Grays Creek's going to have another first down part. And Don, not to alarm you, but that is 10 penalties on Union Pines. Yeah, that's uh, it's just not good. It's, it's uh, totally unacceptable. So that's going to move us into a Remax red zone opportunity. Here we go, the snap, shotgun position, hand off the web, no fakes. He goes oh, deep, and he's wide open, but it's underthrown, and it is it, incomplete. He was wide open, he, he was more. Oh, my goodness. He was wide open. He could have walked it to him, but he underthrew him a little bit, and that's the unfortunate situation of being the backup quarterback. You don't get as many reps as a starter. Davis probably makes that throw. But nonetheless, a good play call there. and a Very good play call. Very I like that play call. Uh, probably one of the best play calls I've seen all night from Grace Creek, you know. Uh, obviously, it, it, it caught Union Pines off guard. So uh, I might would go uh, go with that again. Well, I'll tell you what. They, it looks like they're going to keep Oakley in the game because he is still at the quarterback position, and Tyler Davis has not lined up for a snap. The quarterback all half. He hands it off to Webb. Webb finds some space, and he's going to get a lot of room and keep fighting, and he's going to get to about the eight-yard line, and that's going to be another first down. Move him in even farther into the Remax red zone for a Shed Depot first down. First and goal at the eight. Yeah, first and goal of the eight again. You, I don't think you could go wrong with giving it to Javon Webb. But let me tell you something. Both teams have struggled in the red zone now, especially Union Pines. But Grays Creek has also struggled in the red zone. So let's see what they can do here in the red zone. First and goal from the eight-yard line, Union Pines. Well, partner, 10 to bet you 20. The ball is going to uh, number eight, Javon Webb, or number seven, Tyler Davis. That's, that's what their, I'm thinking. That's been their uh, two-headed horse all night long. That's what I'm thinking. It's like uh, Smith and Irving back in the glory days of the Cowboys. I sense a little uh, co-offensive players of the game here. I'm sensing that too. And if I'm calling the play here, I'm getting his number, and I'm going to hand it to him. Oh, and here we go. We've got another flag. It's in the backfield, so that's going to be on Union Pines. we got a false start, so that's penalty actually against Grays Creek. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. That's against Grays Creek. False. No worries, partner. I'm, yep. pick, I'm picking up what you're putting yep. down. Yep, five-yard penalty, so that will be uh, first down and goal on about the 13 of Union Pines. So there we go. You just mentioned their struggles in the red zones, and part of that has been the penalties. They keep backing themselves up, so maybe Union Pines can make a stand here. I told you. And keep holding them to three. That's exactly right. So here we go. Once again, Elijah Oakley is going to take the snap in the backfield. He's got whips around and Watson. The handoff goes to Watson. He cuts it out left. He's got a lot of space. And a good job by Gilbert getting there, creating the first contact, grabbed him the waist-high tackle. And it looks like number 11 was also in on that play, Harley Moyer, a sophomore safety. 5'10", 170 pounds, so good tackling there. And now it looks like the ball's going to be only a two-yard gain there, partner. So yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, these running backs are doing a really good job of holding on to the ball. You know, when you run, uh, you keep the ball on the ground a lot, you usually in high school have a fumble or two. But these guys, both hands on the ball, coached very well. And I don't believe we've had any turnovers in the game except for that one interception yep. on Union Pines. And correction, partner, that was actually a six-yard run by Watson. So now they're a uh, second goal on about the six- or seven-yard line. The handoff to Webb. No, he keeps it, and he is swallowed up immediately by number 22 for Union Pines, and that is Damon Bremer again. Another tackle by him. He had some help. I couldn't see who quite helped him there, but it was definitely Damon who initiated the contact and stuffed him on the spot. So only a one-yard gain. So now third and goal from the sixth. Union Pines has a chance to make a stand here, partner. What do you think? Well, they, they, they need to do that for sure. And I mean, if they're going to do it, now's the time to do it. Absolutely. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. It's only a one-score game, 14-6, to six, if you're, Grace Creek. If you're Coach Truesdale now here, are you telling your guys just keep them out of the end zone or go for that football and try to make a play here? Both. All right, I like the aggressiveness there, Coach. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, we got double back split off to the side here in the backfield. 
The snap to Davis. He takes it. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. He busted touchdown. out to the right, and that is a walk-in touchdown. Whew, good gracious. Tyler Davis comes through again for Grays Creek. It is now 20 to 6. Now, I will tell you, this extra point is critical right here because this is the difference between a two point or two uh, possession game or a three possession game. Yes, it is, partner. And we both know two point uh, conversions in high school are very difficult. So we'll see what they're going to do here. And, partner, I think they're going for two. Yeah, I think they're definitely going for two here. Again, difference between a two. Well, no, they're kicking it. Okay. They, they fooled us the last time and they did that. And once again, they're doing the funky <laughs> formation here with five, six, seven guys yes, lined up sir. to the left. And now they're going to come back to a regular. Yes, sir. I guess they're just trying to look, get a look and see if there's anything they like, but I'm not quite sure that my grandma could tackle that guy if you don't block anybody. And That's that is very right nice kick. up to uprights. 21-6, to six, Grays Creek lead. Now Union Pines finds themselves in a lot of trouble here. they got to come out and score quickly, not turn the ball over. So once again, to recap, Ben Bickelstein came out there in the second half, and the Union Pines was driving the ball a little bit, and he turns it over, gets an interception. And unfortunately, we're going to have to take a, uh, turn it over. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock, and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Grays Creek 21, Union Pine 6. I'm Blake Rogers. This is my partner, Don Clayton, here in the booth for you from beautiful Moore County. Friday night, August 26th, right around 9.06, 6.38 to go in the third quarter. Looks like it's going to be Blake Mincer again on the kickoff. Union Pines raises that left arm in stride, and he's going to do a little squib kick right down the middle, and it's going to be swallowed up. Oh, my goodness, a little, whew, a little scary moment there with the ball trickling around. Just a moment of hope and a prayer. It's Oliver Cooper who jumped on it. So it's going to be Union Pines football at about 30, the 34, 35-yard line. And, Don, I tell you, we have not seen Grays Creek kick the ball deep one time all night. All night long. So good strategy for them, making sure the runbacks don't happen. And, you know, I was thinking maybe you're seeing that now several times on the kickoff. Maybe Coach Truesdale puts one of his faster guys in the middle on there and, and tries to get a play. But seems like he's content to take the ball at 35 and go. So now crucial drive here, 6.36 to go in the third quarter. Union Pines down 15 points. Grays Creek leads 21-6. to six. Ben Finkelstein on the shotgun, single back. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Five guys on the line. Here we go. He's going to take the snap and the shotgun. It's snapped. It is hands off, and he's got no space again. Union Pines cannot run the football up the middle. They're having a hard time. Let's see if maybe they air it out at second and eight now. And it looks like that was number 32, Russ the bus. Couldn't get a lot of space there. Tried to. Not much cooking. Yeah, well, they got two yards. I mean, again, you know, normally gaining two yards here, three yards there during a series isn't, isn't a terrible thing. But it, it, here you, you're almost in desperation mode. Yeah. We need to get a quick score here to put this back within reach. The handoff again to Russ the bus, and he swallowed up immediately again. Oh, fumble. The what ball did, is on the hey, ground. What did I just say? What did I say two series ago? And it's going to be Gray's Creek yeah, I say? football, and that is a killer. When you keep it on the ground, you got to protect that ball. Two hands because you know the defenders are going after it. Gray's Creek has done that all night. This is the second turnover. So here's the deal, partner. It is going to be extremely difficult for the Vikings to win this ball game. They're losing the penalty battle, and they're losing the turnover battle right now. Two turnovers to none and 12 penalties to two. And speaking of penalties, Don, it doesn't really matter because it's declined, but there was another flag on the play, and it was declined – so that was on Grace UP. Creek, so it was on UP. So unfortunately. Well, it's first down and 10 on the UP 35-yard line, so we'll see what the defense could do. Again, they've been out there all night practically, so you know they've got to be a little bit gassed, although we are coming out of halftime. But, it, but still, you've you got to think they've a little bit gassed. So it, it was a hot day. It was a hot, humid day, so I'm hoping these boys have been hydrated. Tail of two halves, first half, no turnovers for either team, and quickly Grace Creek comes over and forces the interception, then a fumble, gets the ball right back. Union Pine's only been on the field for four offensive plays with two possessions this half. Here we go, Tyler Davis in the backfield. He snaps. He fakes the handoff to Webb. He gets right. He's got a lot of space. And I tell you, uh, protecting that football there because Union Pines was trying to strip him. And that looks like to be number 20, Bro uh, Brody Trinnell on the tackle. 
He is a linebacker slash wide receiver, 6'1", senior, 185 pounds. But nonetheless, even though positive yards, once again, for Tyler Davis. Partner, I tell you, I, we, you know, we were talking at break about uh, the defensive player of the game for Grays Creek, and we were having a hard time coming up with one. And the reason why is because their defense hasn't been out on the field very long. Yes. And Union Pines, honestly, they might get uh, Grays Creek defensive player of the game, to be honest, because they've been shooting themselves in the foot all night long while on offense. Yeah, it's been a tough going for the uh, Union Pines tonight, but hopefully they can get something going here. So the snap, the handoff to Webb again, surprise, surprise, and he finds an open space. And he is still going, and he's brought down at about the 18-yard line. Line. And, Don, i got to tell you, barring a big play on defense here, it looks like Grace Creek is well on their way to scoring again. Looks like that's going to be the case. But we'll see. Once again, they both teams have kind of struggled in the red zone, although Grace Creek did score a touchdown on the last series. But they've got it first out of 10 on the 19. And I will say, it is starting to cool down here in the Sand Hills in Moore County a little bit, thank goodness. Well, I wish somebody would tell that to Mosquitoes because they are still roaming the premises. 21-6 Grace Creek leads. Union Pines has got to put together a stop here, at least at the very least hold Grace Creek to a field goal. They're down 15. Tyler Davis in the backfield, the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, a tight end on the left side and a receiver to his right. He takes the snap. He hands off the web. And this time he is swallowed up by number 71. That is the big defensive lineman. And his – Excuse me, I don't have his number here, but the big defensive lineman for Union Pines, number 71. And well, he wants his name called now, but I do not have it either. I'm missing the number 71. I am, so too, on both charts. Apologies. Now, listen, here's the deal. So, um, just a little side note. So, number five, this was in the first half, partner. Number five for uh, Union Pines, Brett Clemens, came off the field. Uh, he, he, that was an injury timeout. He came off the field in a panic, in a rush, and took off his uniform and is walking up and down the sideline with his uniform off, kind of like a – uh, a um, uh, what's the guy for uh, Tampa Bay that took his uniform off and came off? Antonio through? Brown. Yeah. So that he, he he's that he didn't leave the stadium, but so, he but he pretty much pulled an Antonio Brown. So that's a good good four yard pickup there, third down. Yep. So third down. Now we missed a little action there, and uh, thanks to our PA announcer here, we have uh, number seventy one is T J Robinson. We had him marked down as seventy two on our sheet. So good to know. Thanks to our PA announcer. We got for telling timeout. Us. Uh, Grace Creek. Yep. We do have a timeout. So we're going to take a break here, and we'll be right back. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Right back to the action on the field. Elijah Oakley in the backfield. He's got Webb to his right. Davison uh, Bragg to his left. Lined up. Watson as a tight end. A fake handoff. He rolls out to the left. And a nice little toss. And he's got Bragg, who's got a first down Woo! and a big stick from wow. Union Pines. And I'm not quite sure who that is, partner. Can you make it out? N uh, not yet, but I'm looking hard. I believe it might be. Number 11, Harley Moyer, I believe, on the tackle there. Wow. Big stick. Huge. But nonetheless, a Shed Depot first down. Listen, um, I have news to report. Uh, well, let's see. No, I don't. All right, well. Well, well, I have news to report that there's a number 12 on the Union Pine sideline that is throwing the ball as if he's getting ready to go in on the next series. However, I do not have his name on my list. I think he's just helping Finkelstein warm up their partner because I can see him on the sideline talking to the coaches. So I think he's just a backup helping keep that arm loose. We'll see. But maybe there is some issues going on here with Finkelstein. Hopefully he's not injured. And looks like on the play there, not much of nothing. But still, once again, even when they don't get a lot, they still get positive yards. And Graves Creek pushes for a couple more. It's going to be second and goal from about the four-yard line. Still Dre. Still Dre every day. <laughs> and i tell you one thing, partner. What? Jason Truesdale talked about the game, this game before the half. Uh, we, before we spoke, excuse me, we spoke before the game about how he wanted his offense to come out and maintain tempo. And they did in the first half a little bit with success. Struggling in the second half. Defense has got to make a big play. The snap, the handoff to Webb. He finds space. He's up the middle. And he is in for a Grays touchdown. Creek touchdown. And, folks, 
Still plenty of time left. But that's another nail, and we've only got a couple slots left, if you know what I'm saying. Two minutes, 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. So that's going to be 27 to 6, Grays Creek. And pending the extra point, it's going to be a three-score possession. Well, I'll tell you, partner, this is unfortunately kind of like what Union Pines did to Montgomery County last week because halftime it was a very close game. Listen. And then they ran out and ran up the score, and before you know it, it was 28-7. to I told you at the beginning of this game when Grace Creek came out and they busted the seams. They did not want another close game. They did not, and so far they have not had one. And once again, the kick is good. Four for four on extra points. Yes, and that is uh, number 80, uh, Griffin McIntosh, who is four for four point attempts. But I'm going to tell you something, point after touchdown, but I'm going to tell you something. You cannot call a man's good work without at least acknowledging the things he needs to work on. Well, I'll tell that you. That young man also. I know where you're going with this. Kicked it out of bounds twice. Yes. Now, remember, they split their kickoffs and their PAT So guy. that was a, that was a that different was guy. like Mincer, uh, who has kicked out of bounds twice. I've been correct. So, you know, hey, been that's investigative, hard-hitting journalism. All right, well, I'm going to have to tell you. Finest. I have to tell you, uh, Griffin McIntosh is in the running for offensive player of the game. <laughs> four for four PATs. <laughs> I love it, partner. I love it. Yes, All right, folks. Well, you know what? I've always said silver linings, optimism. Here we go. Football, break it down. You get this ball here, 35-yard line. You get a quick drive. You get a couple slashes you knock this thing down 13 28 we got a ball game here still 242 to go in the third quarter it's anybody's game but union pines has got to bring it and they got to bring it right now right now partner that's absolutely correct no more mistakes no more turnovers cut stop the penalties they just got to stop i mean they just got to stop i mean you've been playing football your whole life come on now you know right versus wrong you got to stop the penalties no more 10 to get to 20, they're going to try another squib kick, and I still don't see any of the guys in the middle. But now we're going to see this guy push up here. Well, you know the why speedsters. they're doing the squib kick, because they've kicked it out of bounds twice. Yes. So let's see if uh, Union Pines can get a little bit of return here. Got a little uh, drop kick Murphy's in the background. Sailor's leg, lost my peg. Here we go, the kick, and right down the middle. And once again, oh, hands. yeah, and there we go. And he's got some space here. Union Pines is coming up the middle there, and he's going to tackle it at the 44-yard line. So that's exactly what we're looking for there, a little bit of positive momentum, a good heads-up play for him to scoop that ball up and get on down the field. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that was Brendan Ortega, who is a senior wide receiver. I believe so. Yes. I believe so, partner. So, so they got the wide receivers out there for their hands on these squib kicks. So good call there by the coaching staff of Union Pines. Going to be set up first down and 10 on their own 44-yard line. All right. Well, let's see what they got going here now. So Ben Finkelstein back in the game. So apparently he is okay, good to go. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. One backfield, five guys on the line. Let's see if the offensive line can hold up and give him some time here. The snap. It's bobbled Bumble. a little bit. Good job by Finkelstein of getting it. And once again, not a whole lot doing, though. Two yards for not quite sure. I think that was Damian Bean maybe there, partner? Or we're gonna have to I get believe the, that is correct. Not quite sure who's on the field there in the backfield with them. Can't make out the number. But nonetheless, second and eight, Union Pines got to get something going here. It's actually, excuse me. Ethan Biggs, partner. Ethan Biggs. Oh, that was uh, the, the flash. flash. Okay, so that's Ethan Biggs in the backfield. He's the main running back. Two yards on that game. So he's actually going to line up on the slot this time. So you got Ethan Biggs in the slot. Another receiver to his left. Two receivers to the right. One back. The snap from Finkelstein. Oh, and that's for the, the third, third one. Third time, and he's going to try to get away, and he's got nowhere to go. And he is swallowed up in the backfield by Christian Walker, strong safety. Christian Walker has been all over the field tonight for the defense partner. We were talking about defensive player of the game. He might just be one. He has put pressure on the quarterback. Not a lot of sacks or tackles, but just consistently pressure in Finkelstein. And the air has just I been sucked just out of this you, crowd. You know, I got to tell you, uh, Blake, this is unacceptable. I yeah. mean, you've got two seniors. You've got a senior center and you've got a senior quarterback. And that's the third time they've snapped it over his head. You've got seniors out there, Blake. Seniors. Yeah. Seniors. That's unacceptable. Well, that's unfortunate, but we do have to remember that, uh, you know, football is a tough game and, and mental mistakes can cost you nine times out of ten more than physical mistakes will. So they're going to have to hammer that down moving forward. But still, long way to go here. Let's put some positive things on the board. Third in a country mile, Finkelstein's going to look to air it out. He's got some room. He's going to run to the left. Thought there might be a flag. Oh, and a risky play. Uh, he sure. underthrows him. Finkelstein thought he had something cooking. He was looking for the flash downfield. But just too much pressure. Couldn't get enough on it. Well, now, partner, it's fourth and 20. I mean, do you go for it? Uh, you no. can't, right? you no, got to punt it at least. Kick it, yeah. yeah, you got to kick it. It's a minute to go in the third quarter. You're, you're three scores down. You have to kick it because otherwise if you don't, I mean, the chances of you picking up fourth and 22, the way your offense played all night is like less than 1%. Yeah, not a very high percentage play. So, unfortunately, 
Union Pines will punt the football. And that is number 23, Austin Mooring. He will oh, oh, there we go. I believe we might have running in. No flag. No flag. How do you oh, know? Oh, I don't. The Maybe umpire he was, was pushed into him. Looking directly at the play, and we got maybe, no flag. Maybe the uh, – Maybe he was pushed into him. That's the only thing I could think because he absolutely was hit. And correction, that's number 20, the punter, Brody Trinnell, not Austin Moore, and he's very upset that there was no flag thrown there. And I got to tell you, maybe not roughing, but at the very least running into yeah, the Yeah, I, I was one. thinking the same thing. So, nonetheless, 53.8 seconds to go in the third quarter. Grays Creek leads 28-6. to six. They have really took over here in the second half. And partner, unfortunately, Union Pines has had no answer. No answer at all. But, like you say, Grays Creek first down and 10 on their own 40. And if they score here, uh, you might want to warm up the buses. So here we go, a, fa a fake reverse, and then off to Watson, and he's got all kinds of room, all kinds of daylight. He's still going at the 45, and he has a 15, 16-yard play down at the 44. And just like that, Grays Creek continues to run this football all over Union Pines. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 100%. Uh, so first down and 10 on the Union Pines 44-yard line. And uh, I told, I've said this all night uh, Union Pines defense is tired, partner. Yeah, they're struggling. The gas is uh, running low in the tank, and they've had a hard time containing Webb, Davis, Watson. Not a lot of pass plays tonight for Grays Creek, but honestly, they haven't had to, partner. Like you said, if, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So snap to Davis. He goes right. He's got some space. He cuts back up the middle of the field, Beautiful. and he's running daylights. That's he might touchdown. take that baby to the house, the 20, the 10. They got a, a hold, though. No, it I believe they got a block in the back. Okay, so we've back. got a touchdown, but it's a block in the back or Once a hold. Once again. And it's going to come back on Grace Creek. And that's the thing. That is the most frustrating foul ever for a coach. You know, you got a, you got a great play. Kid run a great route, and he goes down for a touchdown. You've been playing football pretty much your whole life, and you don't know what a block in the back is? Yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, Don, he probably didn't even need to do that. No, he didn't need to do it. And so that's a break for Union Pines and an unlucky break for Grays Creek. It would have been another touchdown for Tyler Davis. Instead, it's a big penalty, backs him up. But nonetheless, it's still going to be first down. Union Pines trails 28-6. to six. Grays Creek has had their way, and they've gone left, they've gone right, they've gone up the middle. I well, Grays you. Creek came out at the beginning of the game, and they just absolutely dominated the, the line. And when you can dominate the line, you're going to do a lot of good things. And so it's kind of forced Union Pines to commit some silly penalties. But uh, they've domin they, they came out dominating the line, and now that Union Pines has gotten tired, they're just doing whatever it is that they want to do. Yep. So we're coming up on the end of the third quarter here, and we're going to have one more play before the third quarter is over. And unfortunately for these Viking fans who have come out in droves to support their Vikings, yep. It's a uh, blowout so far, 28-6. to six. But I tell you, partner, football is a long game, and you play four quarters for a reason. Now, do I sit here and say that Union Pines is going to come back and win this game? No. But what they can do is put together some plays and potentially give themselves a chance. But it's going to start right here on this drive. they got to make a play before going into the fourth quarter. Give yourself some momentum. The snap to Elijah. He hands off to Webb. Webb, with a lot of space, goes up the middle. But he is smothered. Right there by number 10, Jeremiah Womack. Once again on the play, a lot of tackles for Jeremiah Womack tonight. So into the third quarter, Grace Creek 28, Union Pines Vikings 6. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back, folks. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed. One where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one place to make your buying experience easier. Visit our sales center located just off U.S. Highway 1 in Sanford, or get started today at sheddepotnc.com to view in-stock models or to design your perfect shed using our 3D design tool. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and healthcare power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free, the consultation is free, the advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Will Hort Stadium here in beautiful Moore County, North Carolina on a hot summer August night. Unfortunately for the Union Pines Vikings, it's been a struggle here in the second half. They played well in the first. Not great. Made some mistakes, but stuck in there. 14-6. Grays Creek came out in that third quarter and just rolled over them on up that mountain. 
14 points, two turnovers by Union Pines. Tyler Davis, Elijah Walker, and uh, Javon, excuse me, Elijah Wilson and a Javon Webb have just been having their way. Davis in the backfield, two receivers left. He takes it on a bootleg to the right left, cuts back up the middle, and a big run there, at least 10 yards, definitely a Shed Depot first down, gain of 11. Once again, just continuing to pound the ball, partner. Yeah, Hope Mills, uh, I mean, excuse me, Grace Creek is in Hope Mills, uh, North Carolina. And they're about an hour away from the stadium here tonight. And, again, a great crowd for them. And their band made the trip. So, certainly worthwhile for their fans to come out and watch this game because it is the fourth quarter and they're up 28-6. to six. Yep, so Union Pines got to make a play here. If Grace Creek scores here, you can pretty much go ahead and wrap it up and put a bow on it. The snap, the handoff, it's to Davis. He's got some space, some daylight. And he's tackled a good play there on the defense. Couldn't quite tell who made the tackle, but nonetheless, he's brought down. Looks like a gain of about eight, though. So even when they're able to bring him down, just continuing to run the ball straight at him. And actually, partner, that was number seven. Again, Christopher Gilbert wow. with another tackle. And that's easily at least ten for him tonight, partner. Oh, well, maybe double that. Maybe double that because the defense has been out there for a long time. Want to take a guess at how many plays oh, yeah. the offense for Union Pines has it's run? Over. What? Uh, here we go, the snap. I'll get back to that. But we've got a – before the snap, we got a flag. Looks like a encroachment. I was going to say, want to take a guess at how many plays Union Pines has run in the uh, second half offensively? Uh, four. Seven. Yeah. Seven plays in the first half. Three, um, three possessions. Partner, we got an update in the Sand Hills Athletic Conference. It is a final. Uh, Lee County at home defeats Overhills 21-14. Oh, okay. So Lee County will start the season 2-0. and They'll be leading the – uh, the uh, Sand Hills Athletic Conference. Uh, right now you have Scotland, uh, which I need to find out an update on Scotland. Union Pines and Lee County all enter tonight 1-0. and And so uh, Lee County is going to be 2-0. and It looks like UP will drop to 1-1 one one, uh, unless something miraculous changes. And not sure what's going on with Scotland, but if we can get an update on that, we will let you know. Absolutely. Thanks for that update there, partner. And Lee County squeaks out a close one, probably a little closer than they would like. Down there at Paul Brown Stadium in Lee County. Paul Gay. Paul, excuse me, Paul Gay Stadium. <laughs> My apologies to the great, revered Mr. Paul Gay. So we're going to have a false start here on Grays Creek and kind of a mute point, but six penalties on them and 11 for Union Pines. Funny enough, partner, they cleaned up the penalties in the second half, but yep, uh, true. the turnover is not so much. True. So here we go. Backed up a little bit. Grays Creek is going to have the ball on about the 18-yard uh, line, second and 10 ish. Davis in motion. He goes to the right. The snap. Hands off the web. Swallowed up immediately. And oh, the fault. The ball is oh, loose. Wow. It is out. A fumble recovered by Union Pines. Great heads up play there. Looks like we got 22 in the mix. And that is Damon Bremer. But the guy who recovered the football looks to be Six. 71. TJ Robinson. No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, 16 or 18. So that's going to be Brendan. I'm going to say 18, Brendan Ortega. Brendan Ortega, okay. He also right. plays quarter, uh, cornerback. So that was uh, Brendan Sr., 5'11", 170. Okay, well, partner, there you go. Hey, we need a little bit more of that early, but let's see if Union Pines can put together a drive here and maybe uh, next two, three minutes score a touchdown and give themselves a chance here to at least make a game of it, partner. Yeah, I agree. Let's see if they air it out or if they uh, keep it on the ground. Well, I think at this point you, you, the running offense has been very non-existent. So let's just air that ball out, see what we got going. And they're going to do that. It's going to be a bootleg right. Oh, and he's, got, so it he's got it wide open. That's and Ortega. And he's going to be tackled hard and violently. Once but, again, Ortega is the man of the night. Seems to be there was a whistle blown early, but not quite sure what's going on there. I thought he got more yardage than that there, partner. They're only giving him about four yards. Uh, his knee may have hit when he called it. Okay, that could be what it is because, you know, in high school and college, no contact, but if your knee touches the ground, even without being touched, you are down. So that is the whistle that I heard in my ears. Thank you for clearing that up for me, partner. So Union Pines on the move, 9.40 to go. Ben Finkelstein, shotgun trips right, one left. Uh, back in the, uh, to his left here. Shotgun snap, quick bubble screen. Oh, an errant throw. and Oh, a great tackle, a breaking tackle there. And once again, still fighting. And that is the flash. Ethan Biggs trying to make something happen there. Finkelstein didn't hit him on the move in the right spot, so he didn't really have anywhere to go. So not much of a gain at all there. But it looks like he did manage to pick up about three or four yards. So we're going to have a third. Oh, wait, no, excuse me. That is a Shed Depot first down from Biggs. So Union Pines is on the move. 
925, and tick, 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 the clock is ticking, partner. Trips left, receivers, one to the right. Single back formation. The snap, the handoff. He's got some space, some daylight. Oh, and a spin move, and he's hit hard and brought down. So another uh, update here in the uh, uh, South, uh, Sand Hills Athletic Conference. we got Scotland that is losing, and they're down 15-8 to eight against Hoggard High and School. Number 34 on the run, Holden Thomas, a 5'4", 150-pound back, and he got clobbered there on the play. So kid's got a lot of heart, but he took a big hit from a much bigger man. So let's see what he's got going here. Finkelstein in the uh, backfield. He takes a snap. He rolls to his left. He picks up a block from Holden. Look at the little guy throwing a block. Wide open in the slot. He's got spaces at the sideline at 50, 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Touchdown. He scores. Union Pines, touchdown. Touchdown, And UP. just like that, partner, I said three minutes. How about 45 seconds instead? And that's our man, Ethan. That's the, the flash. flash. Finish. Yeah, he, fin he finally showed a little bit of that flash, did he not? And this crowd is back to life, but partners. Eight minutes and 32 seconds to go. That was an excellent route, excellent catch, excellent run. And you know what? No penalties. Did you see the pickup block by Holden Thomas in the I did backfield? not see it. I have to check it on replay. It, but no penalties. He, no penalties. He made that play. Finkelstein was about to get sacked, and a five foot four running back just blocked a 6'2 senior and set that whole thing up here. Oh, yeah. You could do that all day long if you do it the right skill set. So we're going for two. Got to oh. have it. Oh, and his snap. Oh, and another unfortunate miss issue with getting the snap out cleanly. Hey, don't taunt. Don't taunt. No taunting. And you got to be confused here, Don. I mean, maybe the extra point is just not an option for Union Pines, but they had no success the first time and no success the second time. But nonetheless, a big play, a big splash, and some momentum. Partner, let me ask you this. Too soon for an onside kick? No, absolutely not. You have to. You absolutely have to do an onside kick right here. You just missed the extra point. You're down 14 points. You're down two scores just to just to tie it. So two uh, scores and two extra two point attempts. Yeah. So, so that's a tough one. Uh, yeah. Exactly. No doubt. So yeah, you're right. Uh, six, down 16 points. I'm sorry. So down 16 points. So that's two touchdowns and two extra, two uh, uh, two point conversions. So you absolutely have to do it uh, onside right here. And absolutely, it seems like Union Pines is going to line up here. Let's see what they do. But I tell you, that was some excitement on that play there and a great read by Finkelstein and then of course you know you can credit the quarterback all you want to the thing is he's going to get that 75 yards but Ethan Biggs man he made that play and that is exactly what Union Pines needed too bad it didn't Where happen it? about 14 minutes ago thank you I was going to say the exact same thing where has that been all night long partner yeah well we finally found it so Maybe a um, little bit of light into the ball. Well, they're going to have to get the ball back. Uh, Gray's Creek has been keeping it on the ground, uh, eating that clock up. So right now, if I'm Gray's Creek, I'm going to eat that clock up. I'm going to run it. I'm going to keep it on the ground and see if I can't run that clock all the way down to triple zero. So let's see what Union Pines does here. If they try the onside kick or if they're just going to try to go deep and maybe, maybe get a stop. And they do try the onside kick. And we've got a whistle on the play. Of course we do. Bef before the play's even dead. Hmm. Not sure what's going on here, partner, but looks to be. I'm sure it's offsides. Offsides. But they blew the play dead before it was even over. So they do call a penalty on Union Pines. So they will back them up to the 35-yard line. It's for the very, kickoff. it's very easy to uh, run offsides in, a, in an on, on an onside kick. And you know, teams don't practice that a lot. You yeah. know, you have to give it to them. They don't practice that a lot. But it's very easy to run offsides on an onside kick. So it looks like Union Pines will try again. You're trying to, you're, you're trying to get down there and recover that ball. You're trying to be the hero. But now that Union uh, Grace Creek has brought the guys up, they may try a little squib pooch kick right here on the sideline like they did last week against Montgomery County. If I'm Coach Truesdale, I've got that in the back of my mind because there's nobody here on the right side. Maybe put the pressure on them and get an opportunity here. Good point. Right arm goes up. Here comes the kicker. On top. That's oh, what they're doing. And they are, and that's caught cleanly. Oh, very nice catch there. I thought they might try to go a little deeper with it. That was number 10, Tyler Parks, with the catch. I was thinking maybe around the 35-yard line. Yeah, a little bit further down. You're but, right. A little bit further down. Good effort on the play yep. nonetheless. Yep, yep, I agree. Good call. Good but call. that does uh, benefit Gray's Creek because now they're going to have the ball close to midfield at the 46-yard line. So now, in the words of the great Brent Musburger, now we're never, partner. Yeah, now we're never. that's it. So it's going to be Gray's Creek football, 8.31 to go. It's been a great night here at the stadium. Not the most uh, – pleasant result, but Union Pines showing a little bit of life here lately, and partner, sometimes that's all you can ask for. So, 
Grace Creek will snap the ball. The hand off the web again. He goes right, and he's got no room. This time, Union Pines defense smothers him at the line, and that is number 22, Damon Bremer, in on the tackle, as well as, I believe, once again, that's big number 77, Will Whitaker. Quick question. What was it? Uh, who, who was it that fumbled on the last play for Grace Creek last series? That would be their quarterback, backup quarterback, number 15, Elijah Oakley, on okay. a quarterback option. Okay. So two turnovers for Union Pines in the second half. One for Grace Creek. Maybe, partner, another is on the horizon. That's what we would need, a big play here for Union Pines. Still eight minutes to go. They've got an opportunity to get a stop here and put some pressure on Grace Creek. So Grace Creek's going to line up, tight end to the left. Two receivers to the right, one back. Snap to Oakley. He looks deep, and it's oh almost intercepted that by been something right whoo, there. That would have been the play right there. Almost Brody intercepted. Brody Trinnell. Brody Trinnell, great play there. And I tell you, that was a unforced error by Grace Creek, and they're lucky to get away with that one because if he catches that young man catches that in stride, uh, hey, that he's taking that. He's taking that to the house. That was a pick six. I'm 30 slow and overweight, and I would have made it to the end zone there, partner. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's that. That would have been an absolute 180-degree momentum changer for this ball game. And the great thing about it, though, even though they didn't get the turnover, clock stops on the incomplete clock pass. Clock stops. So time is very important, yeah. very crucial. I would say, partner, you know, Union Pines gets a stop here, gets this ball, scores with five minutes to go, gets that two-point conversion. They're in this thing. I agree. So trip two receivers to the left. They're going to hand it off to Webb. He's got no space, immediately swallowed up and thrown to the ground violently by number 71, T.J. Robinson, in there to help him out a little bit. A couple of guys, 22, Damon Bremer, and then as well, number 10 in there, Jeremiah Womack, fourth down and a country mile for Grays Creek. And all of a sudden, Union Pines has a little bit of life, partner. Absolutely. This is going to be interesting. Who do we got going back to receive this kick? Looks to be, is that 18? 18. That's going to be Brendan Ortega. Okay. And we've called his, nine, his name several times tonight. Oh, it's almost blocked, but he gets it away. And the kicker is running too, but no flag. So I guess that's a little bit of a return for earlier, but these referees are letting these kickers get hit hard. Yeah, I, I, I don't quite understand that. <laughs> They're throwing flags at everything else but that. Partner, that was... <laughs> I had to collect myself. Elijah Wilson, who punted that ball. So he's played so far tonight. Tight end, defensive end, running back, quarterback, kicker, and punter. Wow. Yeah, that is unbelievable. That young man Some, has a lot of skill sets. Somebody sure. get Clemson on the phone and get this man a scholarship, all right? Now, let's tell you, that's a big boy. He's out there well, working hard. He needs to score a touchdown. Trying that's to secure some. this win for his team. But Union Pines has the football. Coach Truesdale talking to the guys, trying to get him fired up. Excuse me, that's actually – the um, OC. OC. There, that's actually Ryan Giggy's OC. He's upstairs on top of the press box. That is Caleb Barlow, the receivers coach. I spoke with him briefly before the game. Very nice man. Appreciate his time. Finkelstein in the shotgun. Two receivers right, two receivers left, single back formation. Here comes the blitz, and he goes deep, and it's, oh, oh. almost caught but dropped by, I believe, Biggs. Yes, Ethan Biggs could not make the play. I will say this about uh, Finkelstein is that um, his arm strength isn't very good. I mean, that, that's the third underthrown ball he's had uh, in this game. One of them resulted in an interception. Yeah. Should have had two interceptions. So, uh, as a senior, you would hope that his, uh, your senior quarterback would have a little bit better arm strength than that. Well, I will say he had some pressure from the corner there, Don, so that may have had an effect on his throw. But he definitely doesn't have the strongest arm. But I've seen him make some good throws. So, the thing for him is going to be consistency. So, yeah. he lines up, and he's got uh, – Three, two receivers right, two receivers left again. He's looking to pass immediately. Oh, and a bad read there. He's not He's not working through his progressions, Don, and that's really hurting him. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, again, both sides of the ball, UP has been getting beat on the line, and if you get beat on the line of scrimmage, it's very difficult to have a good night at quarterback. It is very difficult indeed. So now we got a third and ten. Union Pines backed up in their own 20-yard line. they got to make a play here. Uh, let's see if they call Ethan Biggs' number and try to set up maybe him in the slot, get him a little go route, and – See if he can't beat the safety over the top because we do have two safeties over the top. The snap, the Finkelstein, he's looking. Oh, and he had number three, Clayton Cameron, wide open, and he missed them. Instead, the, the play is made by Ethan Biggs, but not much gain at all. Fourth well, down, and you got to go for it, don't yeah, you, partner? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Fourth and eight, you absolutely go for it right here. Uh, this is the ball game right here, 100%. So I would not be surprised if UP lines up, A, tries to draw them all sides, B, 
uh, takes a timeout to, to come up with a, one final play here on fourth down. Well, There's think, only six minutes and 15 seconds to go. I think Coach Truesdale is going to uh, keep that timeout in his back pocket. Yeah, but I think they're going to try to draw them off sides first. We'll see. Okay, partner, let's see if you got the right idea going here. we got trips to the left. A little confusion in the receivers as they get lined up. Now nope. the snap to Finkelstein. He's looking left. He's looking right away. And he's, oh, and it's dropped right over the middle by Ethan Biggs. They did call his number, but he could not make the play. And he had all kinds of daylight to run. He might have took that one to the house, partner. I agree. You know, when you run that slant route, sometimes you get you get in your head a little bit because you know when, you, when you're running that slant, you're running up, the, you know, in the middle of the field that uh, – you might get popped. Yep. And so you've got that in the back of your mind, and you see it on ESPN every night. You see guys getting popped in the middle of the field. And, you know, I mean, that hit him in the hands. It was a great throw by Finkelstein. I've been a little hard on him, but that was a great throw. Well, I'll tell you what I like. Ethan Biggs is beating himself up now, but three or four of his teammates, including Brendan Ortega, came up and pat him on the back, said, don't worry about it. His coach is same thing. You made a mistake, young man, but you know what? We wouldn't even have an opportunity to be in this game if it wasn't for your big play. Yep. So shake it off, and maybe you'll get one more opportunity tonight. And he's so got, yeah. Here we go, the snap, Gray's Creek. Oh, and he swallowed up immediately in a violent hit and tackle again by the big 77, Will Whitaker. Several times we called his name tonight. Looks like his helmet comes off, so he will have to exit the field. Also, number 15 on the ball carrier, Elijah Oakley, his helmet come off, comes off, so he will have to exit the field for one play. Taking Whitaker's place is number 55 on the field. That is Antonio McAllister, a 6'4 guard slash tackle senior, 320 pounds, Don. Ooh, he looks it too, boy. That boy is He healthy. looks it. I would not want to get in his he way. He looks it, and we're 100 yards away. Yeah, it is uh, very impressive. So here's the snap. Hand off the web. No, the fake, and he's going to try to go left, and he gets beat. Oh, and I tell oh, you. face mask right there. It's very close, but no, I think he brought him down around the shoulder blades. Great job by number 11. Harley Moyer again calling his name. That's another tackle for him. Okay, partner, so third down, five minutes to go. You get a stop here, you get the ball back again, and you try to make a push. You're probably not going to be able to win this game, but at the very least you can cut it down and show these guys that you are not just going to lay down and take it. Absolutely. You know, you get the ball back here, you, you go down the field for a quick score, and who knows what happens next. Yep. You do an onside kick, you never know. Who knows? But the thing is, you got to stop them right here, okay? So, Union Pines. Biggest play of the game so far for their defense. The crowd is getting into it. Little cowbells. We got them going. We're hyped up. We got Davis and Bragg lined up to the right. Two backs, a fake, and he rolls right. And he's looking, hands up, and a hold there blatantly missed oh. by the back official. Ray Charles seen that one, partner, but nonetheless. Yeah. Well, that was a good uh, – I, I can't quite get the number, but that was a great um, deflection. It was a pass deflection, partner. I believe that was Christian Gilbert once again. Christopher Gilbert, excuse me, yeah. not Christian. Yeah, Christopher Gilbert. But yep. once again there, I tell you, uh, Grace Creek got away with a hold. But, you know, it's one of those situations where it wouldn't have really mattered because incomplete pass. Yeah, I'm just really cons – I'm, I'm really – you know, that play call, uh, I'm confused because, you know, why don't you keep it on the ground? Right now your best friend and your ally is the clock. Yes. You know, you don't need to score. Why, why are you trying to throw it? You're well, third down. You might be a little more confused here in a second part because it looks like Grace Creek's going to go for it. Oh, yeah, I would, too. Absolutely. This deep in the uh, Union Pines, I would, too. You Timeout, Grace Creek. They're going to talk about it, though, You partner. wouldn't try for a field goal? No, they're going to talk about it. And Timeout. while they talk about it, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Thank you, partner. We'll be right back. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Back to Union Pines High School Football Stadium, Will Hort Stadium. Fourth down for Grays Creek, and this is the uh, – I know I've been saying this several times tonight, but once again, biggest play of the game because Grays Creek is going to go for it. As my partner said, he would do the same thing. Absolutely. Don, are you going to run the ball here? Are you going to try to get a first down? Hey, you got to run it. Oh, my goodness, run it. Let, it. let the clock be your friend. So let's see what they do here. Two receivers to the left. The They're going to throw it. They're going to throw. Pressure coming. 
And he gets rid of it. I don't understand that. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous call playing right there. Now you're going to give Union Pines a ton of time to get down the field to score a touchdown to make it a one-possession game. Don't understand the play call. You have kept it on the ground all night long. You're up 28-12. to What did I say at the very beginning of the game? You play, you run. If it works, keep doing it. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, John. And they went away from that. John Sherman has got Don Clayton in here all fired up with his play call. He wants to see him ground and pound. As you mentioned, uh, easily Grace Creek has over 240 yards on the ground tonight. Let's see Let's see what Union Pines can do with that. So Finkelstein in the shotgun, three receivers left. He's looking left. And oh. it's oh, through the hands of the receiver who looks at his hands as if to blame them. <laughs> and that is number 18, Brendan Ortega, unfortunately – Incomplete, but also fortunate not intercepted on the tip. So, uh, partner, I got to tell you, uh, these receivers have dropped some balls here. But, I mean, the one guy I keep coming back to look through the slot, Ethan Biggs, is your best uh, big play threat. Got to try to find him and get the ball in his hands and make a play here. I agree. I do see Biggs lined up in the slot, 14. Finkelstein's got two more receivers to the left. And a lot of pressure, and he is sacked at the 15-yard line. Not exactly what you're looking for. Now it's going to be a dire situation. Third and about 16. And partner. those gold numbers are very difficult to see right now with this lighting after looks dark. Like, looks like that was 44, partner, and that's going to be for Grays Creek. Number 44, Jackson Karcher, outside linebacker, junior slash tight end. Yep, and just a little shout-out, too. I do believe number 95, Benny Alford, defensive tackle, was also involved in that play. He was in the mix, I believe. You're right, partner. Thanks for being my second set of eyes up here. So we got Finkelstein lining up. Holding in the backfield. Biggs on the slot. Quick bubble screen, nothing doing there. Oh, and he makes a miss. Oh, he's got some space up on his feet, but not much doing, maybe three yards. So now it's going to be about a fourth and 13. So Union Pines is going to have to get a first down here, or else that's going to be pretty much all she wrote there, Don. Yeah, great. And you know what? They still have three timeouts on the board for Grays Creek on the scoreboard, but they just called a timeout. So those timeouts we can't rely on. But I do believe Union Pines has all three of their timeouts left, if not at least two. Yes, yes. So once again, holding in the backfield. With the quarterback, Finkelstein takes the shot, snap in the shotgun. He rolls left, some pressure. He breaks free of it. He goes deep and some pass interference, but no, no flag. No I tell flag. you, I thought for sure that was going to be pass interference. Yep, and I've been talking about Finkelstein all night long underthrowing, but that one he overthrew a little bit. So and maybe, that's why no, pass. maybe that's why there's no flag on that uh, one. Uncatchable. Uncatchable, yep, yep. Good eye there, partner. So, unfortunately, that looks like that's going to do it because it's 317 to go and now Grace Creek can pretty much just take a knee on the football. Not quite necessarily, but, you know, close to it. Too. Well, like, I don't know. They might try to pass it again. <laughs> now, folks, that is top-tier analysis at right there. I tell you, Don Clayton, full of wisdom. Yeah. Full so of wisdom. Uh, first down and 10 on the Union Pines, 21. <laughs> I love it. It's the first time you got a chuckle out of me tonight, partner. Oh, it took, Good. It took uh, 44 minutes and 53 seconds. Uh, is that right? Yep, here we I go. think I might have got a chuckle whenever no, I said that I, about time. Oh, a big stiff arm, but a nice way to stay with it for the tackle for Damian Bean. But I tell you, oh, boy, that stiff arm looked legit there. That was nice, wasn't it? What Grace, do we have here? Yeah, we're going to have a timeout, Union Pines. Grays Creek, number nine, Camden Bragg, there on stiff arm. Timeout, Union Pines. We'll take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. At King Law Firm, we draft wills and health care power of attorney to protect individuals' wishes. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm, we fight to make it right. Hi, I'm Pat McCracken. With over 30 years of educational experience and a current member of the Board of Education, I bring exceptional knowledge of key strategies needed for student success. From interacting at schools to Friday night football, I have a passion to see all students excel academically, athletically, and socially. I am focused on the total success of every student in Lee County Schools. I am Pat McCracken, and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Pat McCracken. All right, folks, and welcome back in the play here. Tyler Davis takes it to the right. And he swims right. Christian Gilbert gets, a blo gets blocked. He can't get there. And looks like that's going to be oh, a violent, hard arm Ooh. tackle there. Caleb Milton, defensive back. He's just a sophomore, but homeboy is 6'2", 185. He just threw the load down. 
I tell you what, if you're going to end the game, end it with a flurry. Make a, make a statement there. That Good was. play there by Milton. And you know what? Yeah. I don't care if the score is 28-12, 28-27, 45-7. Keep, you keep playing. playing. You put effort in, and you play till the final whistle. That's and right. I tell you what, Coach Truesdale might not leave this stadium the happiest in the world, but I think there's a lot of positive things to take away from this game aside from the negatives, partner. I do agree. Well, you know what? You, you, you reduce the penalties by, say, 80%. Uh, you reduce the turnovers by 100%. Snap, hand off to Wilson. He swallowed up immediately in the backfield. Another big tackle. Looks like that time it's going to be – can't quite make it out. They we'll, just all run together at uh, this we'll, time of night. That's 22. Got it. And that is Damon Bremer again. Another tackle for him. He's had a really solid night tonight, partner. But clock is ticking. Yep. 2.35 to go. So I want to remind folks, partner, that uh, we're going to have a post-game analysis. So stick around. Don't tune out after the game tonight. Stick around, and we're going to be naming the offensive and defensive players of the game for each team. Absolutely. So make sure you join us for the um, post-game, and that is uh, sponsored by Everything Pines. So join us for the Everything Pines post-game. So here we go. Two receivers to the left. I wonder if uh, Grace Creek's going to throw the ball here, partner. Uh, nope, they're going to run it. Smart play call. And Davis up the middle, touchdown. and he's going to score a touchdown. And that is going to be a wrap. Yep, I believe it is, boy. Unfortunately, Grays Creek again dominant on the ground. Union Pines not able really to put together a lot of offense. So it'll be a touchdown. Looks like we've got an injured player on the field, unfortunately. Can't quite make out who it is. But the athletic trainers are on the field to check on him. So while they do that, we're going to take a quick break. If you've been injured in a car crash, the personal injury lawyers at King Law Firm will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Call King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Legacy commercial and residential construction. From concept to design. Constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Legacy Commercial and Residential Construction. The Sand Hills Residential and Commercial Builder of Choice. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. And welcome back, folks. And good news, the injured player on the field, and that is number 10, Jeremiah Womack, is walking off under his own power. So excellent news to see in an otherwise unfortunate night for the Union Pines Vikings. But like I say, you know, you can't win them all. And they've had some good things, and they've had some bad things. But unfortunately, Grays Creek has just been too tough an opponent for them tonight. So we're going to see. Oh, what do we got going on we here? we got that funky formation go. again. Listen, uh, he's going his, his, his fifth attempt for a PAT, and he is now – Five for five, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That is Griffin McIntosh. And he is strutting off the field, feeling himself right now. He should be feeling himself. Justin Tucker Jr., ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he should be feeling himself. Great leg hey, there. While we are at a little, little break, I'll just remind the audience, next week on uh, September 1st, UP uh, is going to enter one and one. Uh, they have another home non-conference game against Western Hornet. Now, remember, Western Hornet used to be in their division when it was the Tri-County Six, and now it's the Sand Hills Athletic Conference, the SAC. So they are very familiar with Western Hornet. But Western Hornet, they are also want to know. I'm not sure how they did tonight, but they're coming in uh, uh, tomorrow, or excuse me, next Friday night. And then Grays Creek will be back at home, and they'll be hosting West Johnson. All right, so make sure you tune in and join us for that. It should be a fun one. Hopefully Union Pines can bounce back and get back in the W column because, as you mentioned, partner, you got to win these non-conference games when you have the opportunity because when you face teams like Lee County, Scotland, Richmond. You better be ready. It's going to be tough going. Let me tell you, Union Pines tonight against Lee County or, or even Pinecrest, for that matter, Scotland, uh, it, would, it would be a lot worse than what it is right now. In this. You cannot commit 16 penalties and give away the ball twice. You just can't do it. Yep, I got to say, partner, I agree with you. You couldn't do it. The, the UUP is a 3A school. Uh, I believe Grace Creek is 3A, but even if you're playing in 1A school, it doesn't matter. If you if you give the ball away a couple of times and then you have all those penalties, it's just going to be very difficult to yeah. walk away with a W. And I tell you, that's uh, drive killers, and that's equated to a little bit of basketball with my coach, and I would tell my guys, you know, turnovers and offensive errors unforced, that's the biggest key mm -hmm. in basketball, football. You've got Any to, sport. You've got to protect the football. 
And unfortunately tonight, Union Pines had two turnovers. Oh, and a quick onside kick here. Un oh, and Grays Creek is going to recover the football. No, 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 no. UP's got it. Did UP manage yeah, on to the get onto it? Yeah, on the 50. Number okay, 11. It looked, looked like it squirted. Well, luckily there, it squirted away for a second, and I saw Arlie nothing. Arlie Moyer. I saw nothing but white jerseys around it. But, partner, i got to ask you, 35-12, what are we doing? Outside kicking <laughs> I think, the ball. I think they're trying to get the ball so they can run the clock and go home. All right. Well, they got an hour drive home, bro. I, it's going to be 12 o'clock, I mean, 1 o'clock in the morning before they get home. That's, a, that's a fair point. But 35-12, yeah. onside kicking, yeah, I mean. Yeah, well, it's also a time to practice your onside maybe, kicking. Maybe it's the coach in me, but I'm putting that in my back pocket. I, I remember, don't I remember think that, that they did that to run the score up. I think they did it to run the clock out and go home. Okay, all right. Understood. Trips right to the Trips to the right. One receiver to the left, one back in the backfield. A quick bubble screen to Ortega. He takes it. He cuts up field. Not much of nothing. Tackled immediately, swallowed up by number three for Grays Creek, and that is Khalil Joe. Called his name a couple times tonight. A wide receiver slash free safety slash strong safety. The young man who does it all on both sides of the football. He is a senior. Yeah, the young man that recovered the ball for Union Pines is Harley Moyer. He is a safety and a halfback. Uh, he's a sophomore, 5'10", 170. So a lot of these young men, two-way football players, and you see that a lot at the high school yeah, level. And you, you used do. to see timeout, that. Timeout, Grace Creek. So we got a timeout, so we'll get back to that thought. And while we have a timeout on the field, we're going to take a quick break and check with our sponsors. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law. Union Pines is just trying to put together some points here, partner. Yeah. Any way they can. They just want to get some momentum and – Make this Take it in the next week. That's right. Look, make this scoreboard look a little bit better. Snap the Finkelstein. He's going immediately, but he underthrows it, and a big hit from the cornerback for Grays Creek number 10. Tyler Parks rocks the receiver for Union Pines, and that was again Ortega. He took a shot. It'll be third and about eight. 33.8 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us. I'm Don Blake Rogers. This is my partner, Don Clayton. Here in a beautiful Moore County, North Carolina. Finkelstein will line up in the backfield. He's got Holden to his right, trips to the right, one receiver to his left, shotgun formation, takes the snap, rolls to his right, picks up a block, and the Holden blocks him right into his quarterback. And folks, if I'm Jason Truesdale right now, I don't want Just my bring it in. I don't want my quarterback. I don't want to get hurt. Bring it in. Just let that, that clock was, run uh, all the way down. That was Christian Walker. Uh, he's strong safety. He is a senior. Christian Walker. Well, unfortunately, folks, for your Union Pines Vikings, that is going to be the final score. That's going to do it. 35 to 12. The team's come off the field now. Make sure you stay tuned for post-game analysis, and uh, we're also going to have some players of the game. So Absolutely. thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, partner. I can't I can't tell you. You caught me there. I was just about to say the same thing, Don. It has been an excellent time. Make sure to join us for the post-game show presented by Everything Pines. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience, each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed, where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock, and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at ShedDepotNC.com. Buy your next new or used car the way you want to buy with the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy Program. Visit PinehurstToyota.com and choose or build the vehicle you want. Try the Pinehurst Toyota Smart Buy. It's the easiest way to buy your next new or used car. Legal matters involving the family can be emotionally draining, complex, and difficult for all involved. Call the highly skilled attorneys at King Law Firm today. The call is free. The consultation is free. The advice is priceless. King Law Firm. We fight to make it right. Everything Pines Realty presents the Post Game Show on the NFHS Network. Brought to you by New Image Media. 
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Will Hort Stadium with Blake Rogers and my partner, Don Clayton. Final score, Grays Creek 35, Union Pines 12. So, Don, what do you got for us? Well, I'll tell you right now, we're going we're gonna to look at some players of the game. This was a very impressive game by Grays Creek. They really came out. They surprised me. I think they surprised most of the home crowd here in, uh, in Moore County. They came out and played really hard. I'll tell you, there's a couple of offensive players of the game that we want to mention for Grays Creek. First of all, Tyler Davis, the quarterback of Grays Creek, number seven, just played an outstanding game tonight, really keeping it on the ground, more, more so as a running quarterback versus a throwing quarterback. Also want to give a shout out to my man Griffin McIntosh, who went five for five on his PAT attempts. And then the defensive player of the game, we mentioned it really big at the end, just came out really bad, had a couple of sacks during the game, and that's going to be Benny Alford, the big defensive tackle from Grays Creek. Now, let's talk about the home team, Union Pines. Union Pines comes out tonight. They did not get... They're, they did not put out their best effort tonight, and, it, and the scoreboard shows that. But I will tell you, there were some kit, they got a lot of good things to work on, uh, Blake. I'll tell you, a lot of good things to work on, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to talk about offensive player of the game. We've got a couple of them, honestly. And you gotta, you got to mention number eight, Jason Jernigan. He is the wide receiver for Union Pines. In addition to Jason, you also have to give a shout-out to number 14, and he is the Flash. Flash. Had a great, great game. Um, now, But on the defensive side for Union Pines, you have to really look at my boy, Christopher Gilbert, number seven for Union Pines. I'm going to tell you, partner, I don't think if Union Pines had anybody else to put out there other than one player, I would put number seven, Christopher Gilbert. He is a senior Offensive, uh, defensive end, and outside linebacker. 6'2", 205 pounds for that young man. He is definitely the defensive player of the game. But I got to give a shout-out to Jeremiah Walmack as well as Brendan Ortega as co-defensive players of the game. That's all I got for you. Well, partner, I got to tell you, it was a great time doing this uh, game with you. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Everything Pines, for the post-game show. Before we go, let me end with a couple of things here. So 35-12, to 12, not the outcome you're looking for. However, Union Pines has some things to build on. Fickelstein had some moments. The, the, the thing they have to stir up the most is the defensive line and the offensive line. Tonight, Don, they lost the battle of the line of scrimmage. They, uh, they and did. if you want to have success in any level of football, but especially high school football, you got to do that. So last week against Montgomery County, had success. This week they struggled. But a lot of flashes and bright things, and I say optimism. And Jason Truesdale makes some adjustments, come back out next week, and try to get a win. I agree. And they're going to be facing Western Hornet. Western Hornet was used to be a conference foe against Union Pines in the Tri-County Six. But now we're in the sack, and Western Hornet is no longer a conference foe. So it will be a non-conference game next Friday night. We'll see you here in Moore County. All right. Before we go, we want to thank our sponsors. We've got Pinecrest Toyota. Thank them. We've got a Legacy Residential and Commercial Construction. The Shed Depot, our Shed Depot first down. Remax Red Zone. King's Law Halftime Show, Zaxby's for our pregame show, and then Everything Pines postgame show. For Don Clayton, I'm Blake Rogers. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week, folks. Jen Ritchie and her staff at Everything Pines can show you all the Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Aberdeen, and Bass have to offer. A trusted real estate professional with over a decade of experience. Each client receives a customized marketing plan featuring professional photography, drone footage, and floor plans designed just for them. For more information, go to everythingpinespartners.com and check out one of the hundreds of reviews. Everything Pines, showcasing the Sand Hills. At the Shed Depot of North Carolina, we believe there's a better way to buy a shed where all the selection, all the quality, and all the service are in one convenient location to make your buying experience easy. Our three-acre sales center has over 60 sheds in stock and if you don't see what you need, our sales experts can guide you through the custom design process to meet your unique needs. Get started today at SheddepotNC.com. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Come